Hey, um, Scott, right. I'm uh, I'm trying to run a co-run a podcast here, and it's uh, really hard to take you seriously while you're wearing that. Do you mind um, taking your bald cap off, please? Yes, uh, take my bald cap off, not put my wig on. <laughs> All right, shut up for a minute. I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try a thing where I talk about money right at the beginning of the I show. Like because like sometimes it. we do it early-ish, sometimes we do it two and a half hours in, but rarely is it the first thing, besides, of course, our well-rehearsed bald cap <laughs> bit. <laughs> so, hey, there's Drew over there to my left, your right, and here's me. And what we need from you, the loyal listener, is money. Because we need to step our podcasting game up mainly through uh where we're doing it and with what equipment we'd like a better place to do this which will uh, and the savings will be passed on to you (laughs) 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 yeah i sort of lost the thread of that um paypal.me slash not scott henson uh did it, and you can send in the message. This is for both of you for the thing. Or you can send it to paypal.me slash softpaws and say the same thing. Uh, if it's for both, you don't need to send each of us half. We're not going to cause you the extra work. So please do that. We could uh, very much use it. Uh, Drew has dark secrets that... Uh, that Only can... one person has taken me up on. That's better than zero. That one's better than nothing. But uh, Drew... But had... that one... <laughs> The worst. <laughs> Drew has dark secrets that can both be. Uh, here's the beauty: it's a it's a win-win situation that can both be bought with money and fixed with money. Correct. So you're doing the Lord's work by which Lord? Allah by sending money. Uh, we're both uh, not good in the money department, and you can make us better. If there's some sort of angel investor out there who wants to go big, fantastic. If there's regular regular, uh, lunch pail Steve out there who just got a couple bucks, that's great too. Any, anything helps, anything works. PayPal.me slash not Scott Hansen, PayPal.me slash Sarian Softpaws. Get it done. Still, still waiting for somebody to turn this into an all one piece podcast. It's not off the table. What was it, like $42,000? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the math right now. <laughs> we, uh, we do have a full season of anime coming up. And uh, what is probably two seasons of anime on the drawing board. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. So yes, if you uh, if you be if uh, the satisfaction of a job well done isn't enough uh, for you to send money, uh, you can also request things uh, for uh, 150 a pop per under two hour movie or 150 per two hours of runtime of a show. Let's be honest, probably an anime because that's it's not that, it's not as much as you think. That's what you guys are like. Only six, seven thousand bucks for. I don't think they're, that's they're 24 minute episodes. And how many episodes? 1107. So like 22, 23,000 minutes mm-hmm. divided by 60 is like, call it 400 hours. 442. Yeah. Divided by, oh yeah, divided by two times 150, I guess, right? Hold Did on. you? <laughs> Hold on. Well, I think we. <laughs> yeah, well, I think what I think. I think we might have done a thing. Yeah. 1107. While Drew does his calculations, the uh, the one other way is to go to uh, the YouTube that you might be uh, listening or or even watching, just staring at the screen, watching the uh, waveform. One point nine million dollars was what the actual amount was. No, <laughs> no. that's too, <laughs> you're you're <laughs> terrible at this. Um, go to the YouTube, youtube.com slash at not Scott Hansen. At least subscribe if you're not already, because that's the goddamn least you can do. And ideally, click the join button and become a member at the five, ten, or fifty, which is the correct amount dollar level uh for early episodes badges emote and uh ability to talk to us on a personal level um where 
we're at 34 members currently. We would love to get to 40 and open up a new uh, emote that uh, Karaxa has already drawn and is just waiting to be allowed to be put up by YouTube once, once we get that uh, number of members. So do that. We got that nice little influx last month. I don't exactly know why, but I'm glad we did. So do it again. Tell a friend. Do a thing. Also, we're very close to... 3,500 subscribers or something. So let's, let's stop dicking around and get that to 4,000 like right now. Just 500 of you. Just go get one more person. 500 of you who are listening to this podcast every week and aren't subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. You don't even need to get a friend if you're not subscribed. Just subscribe. Yeah. What are you, what are you even doing? Subscribe it. Uh, like like the episodes. That helps the algorithm. You, you, you know, the, the whole, you know, like and subscribe thing is very annoying. I get it. But it is like there's a reason that literally every... YouTube thing asks you to do that because it's what helps. So like, subscribe, and comment, please. And sorry in advance that uh, YouTube is auto-deleting so many fucking comments, including my own on my own videos. And and I can't even figure out what is like tripping the the uh, the fail safe <laughs> on you. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, I'm responding to like a wrestling thing from Brian Palmer. And I'm like, why did I have to do this six times? Gotta stop calling people simps. <laughs> That's a getcha. Can't say cracker anymore. Crack, cracker or simp. Virgin. Virgin. Yeah, I, I love that new, that run of new bad words on Twitch like a couple years ago. Which is, yeah, just, just that shit. Just the lamest shit. Yeah. Thanks, Obama. Hey, uh, how many new followers on Letterboxd do you have lately? Is it the oh, same amount as me? I think it's the exact same amount as you. Just you, me, and Adam's fake channel? Uh, yeah. And did you realize that they are sentient and aware and they comment on things? Oh, dear. So, the reference I'm making is that in, yeah. in the last two weeks, less than two weeks, last week and a bit. Okay. Okay. I went from 144 followers yep. to 181 followers that are nothing <laughs> but boss baby related character bot accounts. So, for example, like, I'm, I'm just going to, you've got your own stuff going on, but I'm going to read yep. off of my new followers. Okay. For example, like, I don't know, JJ from Boss Baby, uh, Jor Jorgo from Boss B, uh, Girl Boss Baby, <laughs> uh, Shouter Win Boss B, uh, Show Rick Boss Bab, <laughs> show, show Fred Boss Bab, yep. Show Stacy Boss Ba, Show Jimbo Boss Ba, Dry juice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dry juice. <laughs> Pitfall Jones. <laughs> yeah. So something like that? Something like that. Uh, so, yeah. Randomly, just somebody create... Because, like, at first I was like, it's just bots. Yeah. So I went ahead and made the exact... But it's this, like, Borg-esque collective yeah. cluster. So I went ahead and watched 2017's The Boss Baby... Oh, just so I could get a grasp on who all of these characters are. I, yeah, I don't know, Stacy. I don't know, Jimbo. So I said, uh, considering I have had absolutely nothing but 50 boss baby related bots follow my account in the last week, I figured I should struggle my way through this. Outside of some clever gags and jokes that was pretty dumb and for babies. The animation isn't bad. Baldwin's voice is pretty soothing, but I can't not hear him as Jack from 30 Rock. I can't not hear him murdering a cinematographer. <laughs> I got seven comments from the from? Boss Baby accounts. Oh my god. That just say, then watch Boss Baby 2. Don't worry, we love your rating because it's, it isn't a half a star. We will hate you if you don't watch Boss Baby 2 Family Business. This sounds threatening. As long as you watched The Boss Baby, we are happy. We don't care about ratings, but it would be nice if you gave it five stars. Now watch <laughs> Boss Baby 2 and we will be so happy. Boss Baby 2 when? All caps. Just watch Boss Baby 2, The Godfather Part 2 of Animation. <laughs> You kind of have to watch it now. I guess I'm going to have to. Family, it's family business. It's family business. Uh, that's insane. <laughs> this is uh, this uh, this is clearly one real weird guy. Yeah, just doing this. Who has just doing a thing? Thirty three accounts or something. Something like that. And uh, just 
insanity and everything on their reviews and likes is just a continuous thread oh my god you're scrolling and all i'm seeing is the boss baby of boss baby related stuff over and over and over it's just reviews and likes of reviews of boss baby comments on reviews and comments on reviews and is there lists this is insane no lists but the films are just the seven Boss Baby related films, including Boss Baby 3, which hasn't even been made. I'm sorry, did you say seven? Uh, there's a Christmas one. What the There's fuck? one about a horse. <laughs> Boss horse? Boss horse. Boss foal? <laughs> <laughs> a ba- a baby, a boss baby horse. Yeah, boss, I'm, boss yeah I'm writing it down. I'm not an idiot, Drew. I'm writing down boss uh, Are you kidding a, me? There's a couple of shorts. One three minute short, one twenty four minute short, one forty seven minute Christmas movie, what one f- four minute pony short, and then the two movies plus Boss Baby three, and that is the only movie that any of these accounts yep. have viewed, liked, reviewed, commented on, and there is. 33 accounts. It's insane. So I guess tonight I'm watching Boss Baby 2. Yeah, obviously you are. Are you kidding me? Or we can invite Kelly over for a bad women's wrestling. Or both. Or both. What if you guys only watch Boss Baby 2? (laughs) Kelly, would you like to come over and watch bad women's wrestling and Boss Baby 2? And maybe we could fuck my toaster? (laughs) (laughs) I'm looking at the toaster. (laughs) Oh. Don't, act, don't act like you can't fuck it. Oh, so, so you I can, can fuck, fuck it. it. Uh, yeah, that is a insi- That's the insanity of the internet. That's I, I thirty-three that new boss baby accounts, all created in the span of a week. Yeah. And, like some of them in the same day. I'm sure many on the same. But like, day. You, do you have to, you have to create an email account for every yep. single one of those? Different email for everyone. And then upload a picture. Yep. Log in. Mm-hmm. Follow you, me, and the YMS page. That's correct. Log out. Yep. Log into the next one. Rinse and, and rinse and repeat. Yep. That's insane. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's it's a big internet out there, and there's something for everyone. I guess there really is. <laughs> Uh, now this is something that made me think of something that happened earlier, but then I'm also going to bring up is, uh, have you seen noted, uh, uh, g- killer of her mom, Gypsy Rose? Yep. Have you seen her boyfriend? Is he what I would picture for a dating Gypsy Rose type fella? Yes. Great. But then maximize. Maximize, you say? We're we're min maxing here. I want to find all the all the stats we don't care about. We're doing nothing with, and we're just juicing all the good ones. I need a picture, please. Twitter, you're not helping me out here. I thought you'd just load it up right away, but apparently I'm gonna have to go to the Google machine. Or or you know what? I'm gonna bing. You should it. bing it. I'm gonna bing it. You should probably bing it. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Google. <laughs> Type in <laughs> take me to bing dot com. <laughs> take me to bing. Dot com. Is that what? It took me to Bing. Nice. No. Nope. I don't want Microsoft support. Thank you. <laughs> Gypsy Rose. Boyfriend. Boyfriend. I almost had a mild panic at my phone because my phone said 60%, but I'm like, it should be close to 100%, but it's 60% chance of showers. Ah. Uh, so I'm okay. Uh. Let's see him. Real handsome looking dude. Ooh, he's he's made a beard choice. Yeah. And he's, and that is to just not trim or Yeah, just yeah. not cut his beard, period. But then I saw it. I think that's the boyfriend just, that helped her do the oh, killing. Current boyfriend. I think she has a current boyfriend that I saw, but it is, these pictures are apparently not Gypsy Rose's current boyfriend. Uh, husband that's... sorry oh husband i forgot that gypsy rose kind of looks chinese yes Wait, like when her like when her head was shaved yes look at that look at this guy oh not exactly what i expected actually just like a a, a big fat nerd yeah just like a punchy like it guy but there's a there. I wish I could find the picture. There's one very specific picture of them, like outside of a courthouse, where he he dwarfs her in size. I mean, yeah, because she's 
quite short and he looks like well, a tall guy that's because her growth was stunted uh yeah she was probably supposed to be like five seven and she turned out to be five <laughs> one yeah uh she was not given a lot of advantages here you go. Oh, oh, he's he's a Peter Griffin type. He, yeah, he's uh, much wider than I could tell from the first picture. Yeah, because the first picture was sort of a profile shot. He's like he's, he's really wide. He's like a Louis Anderson in baskets. Yeah, he's like he's six three, three hundred and thirty pounds. He's a chode. He's a tuna can. <laughs> but yeah, she was probably supposed to be a normal sized girl. Yeah, but she got her growth stunted. Yeah, <laughs> so she looks like a midget. <laughs> Oh, midget. You can't say midget on TV. That's like saying the N-word. It's not. No, you no, know how I know, I know it's, it's not? Because I'm saying, saying midget. midget. <laughs> We're not even saying what the N-word means. Scott, would you like to say what the N-word means? No. Okay, what if we go to the and, car? But, no, that's what the N-word is. Oh. No, the real N-word. What if we go to the car? Then you can say it. Oh, then I'll scream it. Yeah, because you're in your safe space. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's her and her fat husband at AEW. Nice. I never would have guessed that one or both were wrestling fans. <laughs> ah, wrestling fans are the scum of the earth. Wrestling fan, wrestling is such a weird thing currently, um, because because of its its history, it is uh like historically attracted trash. Yes, but now it's in this weird middle spot where it's also attracting nerds. Yeah, uh, but the trash isn't gone. No. But, so now there's both. But and the, it's weird. But the trash is WWE. And the neckbeards are AEW. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. If you were to generalize it, yeah, it's that for yeah. sure. And and indies also neckbeards. Yes. Except in the South where it's trash. That's true. So it's weird. And then Japan is neckbeards. No, Japan is the Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> Yakuza. Because like, they're financing it. Oh, it's, uh, it's snow raining outside. Cool. Oh, great. I hope you don't want to go home later. They say you can never go home again. What is that a Bon Jovi song? No. <laughs> Run, what's Runaway Train Never Go Win Back? Soul Asylum? Is it? I think so. <laughs> it's not the worst music we heard today. Nope. Um, yeah, I guess let's do that. Yeah, we're only 15, 18 minutes in. We're fine. We're fine. We're uh, at Terry and Softballs on things, Letterbox, Twitter, Instagram, Macedon. Also, I got new Macedon art from Edgy Berserker. I, and I you love. Rule. I love that she sends the art. Edgy on Berserker, first. you rule. Yeah, I mean, that's a really nice pick. Yeah, I liked it a lot. You're not, you're not getting any. It's Try not, to gave me one. It's not for you. It's for my eyes only. <laughs> I'm James Bond. Fair enough. Yeah, the, literally the only person I interact with on <laughs> Mastodon. Mastodon is Edgy Berserker. <laughs> no one else even knows it still exists. Nope. You can follow me on Mastodon if you want, but uh, I don't use it. I don't know why you would, but <laughs> you but you can. My uh, 11 followers there. and 9 following. Pretty nice. Uh, yeah, at not Scott Henson on the things, but not... Ma Actually, maybe also Mastodon. You do? Yeah. Savage Steve Harvey, is that you? Yes, <laughs> I think it's not Scott Hansen. Yeah, I think that's me. I've, I've never put anything on it. Why Savage Steve Harvey? Because Savage, Savage Steve Holland. Ah, okay. okay, okay. Of Better Off Dead. Better fame. Off Dead. Yeah. I think I just did it like the day after we did Better Off Dead or something. <laughs> I I can't figure out any other reason why. And is it? it and what's my? St it's I like it. it's not Scott Hansen. Dot transfer. Dot social. I think. Because of that, because they do that weird yep. thing. Transfer yeah. dot social. Yeah, because I am a transfer. Uh, yeah, mine's just Mastodon dot social still. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's probably what I should have. Because I feel like I tried to search myself on Mastodon and I couldn't to see even if somebody else had your account and couldn't even find myself. No, like oh. a after I created the account, yeah. like I couldn't even find oh. myself. <laughs> so that's uh, that's always good. I think kind of the same thing on Blue Sky too. I don't know. Whole thing's a mess. I got put in PayPal jail for like two days. Really? Because I like never verified my account and then uh, noted friend of the podcast and very polite bunny who is out of temporary timeout uh, <laughs> sent me some money nicely. And then when I accepted it, it got put in my account. And then I immediately got a notification from PayPal. They're like, there's a lot of money going through this account. And oh, really? You haven't and like not... <laughs> verified who you are. So I had to like verify who I was. Okay. And it took them two days. But I so was, you're, you're for two days. I was on PayPal ban. <laughs> you're legit on PayPal I'm now. Legit on PayPal now. Nice. 
I had to show him my passport and my butthole, <laughs> all my fingerprints. Two. Yep. Sp- uh, spit, spit uh, swab, everything. <laughs> Penis swab. Penis swab. Those are painful. Those suck. Yeah. I've had to have one done once and it was I the have worst. had to have zero and I would love to keep it that yeah, way. It fucking sucks. I, uh, not to give TMI, but I had a much younger girlfriend mm-hmm. who I was having a very aggressive sex with. Uh-huh. And uh, too often... And it was hurting when I peed. So I went to my doctor and he did the swab. And then he was like, oh, um, just don't have hard sex. Yeah. And so I was you, like, oh, oh. you thought you like maybe you had a disease or something, yeah. but you were just fucking too hard. Yeah. I was pulling. It was pulling Ugh. the urethra apart too hard, Ugh. too frequently. So, yeah. So no hard sex and no uh, uh, springboard leg drops to the floor. Oh, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh. Uh. You, you you really uh, relicked your balls and oh. dick. <laughs> Don't, whatever you do, if you've never listened to the, the WCW years of this podcast. Season one. Uh, don't look up Johnny the Bull, I don't know, Terry Funk and see what happens. Yeah, Johnny the Bull leg drop, Johnny the Bull urethra, Johnny like. the Bull Terry Funk. Let me see what happens if I put in Johnny the Bull leg drop and I'll tell everybody. I mean, it's got to be that. It's got to be that. Oh, so I remember we in season one we were doing like because we knew it was coming oh, soon. It's we, the first we were video. doing countdown to urethra gate. It's the first. It's, it's the, the first thing. thing. Yeah, Johnny the Bull leg drop. Check it out. You're gonna like the way you look. Oh no. Oh, I, li- I like that he jumps up and kind of. Oh, he like, he like stands there for a minute, right? Like contemplating well, he, his choice. Well, he jumps up and then doesn't really have the full balance. So he jumps back down. To oh, that's right. Ring goes again and then goes. And then as soon as he lands, he just like his life is ruined. Yeah. Ripped his urethra God. and his bladder, I think, too. Like, uh, yeah, like just all his tubes came out. Loose tubes. I don't yeah. like you loose tubes. No tubes are meant to be connected. Uh, anyways, <laughs> yes, they are. You're not not Scott Henson. <laughs> One I more burped, time. I broke the middle. You're, you're not Scott Henson. <laughs> I am at not Scott yes. Henson. You got on, a cameo on the important things. I do have a cameo. Cameo.com slash scoot. People have been asking you for weird things lately. Um, nothing that weird. Regular stuff. One thing I and I I think I said it in one of my most recent cameos. Like I got to imagine largely because of Adam. Like my fan base. I'm assuming is 95 percent gay, but every cameo request i get is for like that is for a significant other always straight hmm. always weird yeah i love it that is pretty strange it's what god wanted god intended for people to be straight yes i agree <laughs> I, I didn't think about it but yes <laughs> mm. what was it Je- jeff die is that a guy that's a name comedian yes that's uh, a person a very funny argument he made is how if you look at all of it now again this podcast is very pro palestine um oh speaking of which we're gonna have to uh take a, a minor pause uh we are also making the international sign of pause um before the the music the, the music video review segment of uh the podcast that we of course do every week yeah um because th- there is a, a bit of news related to that yeah, which w- news slash doubling as the real ass dude of the week. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, but no, yeah, it, Jeff I we are pro Palestine. The very funny joke he, he was talking about on some podcast was like how all of the women that are like fighting for pro Palestine and they all are like converting to Islam to yeah. like fight against the uh, America and Israel and whatever. It's like. How ridiculous it is that they're like feminists who want to have equality and like respect and blah blah. But then and they're where li- better to go than Islam? And they're literally joining <laughs> Islam, which is like the complete <laughs> where they can't opposite drive. <laughs> of like they want to be treated as equals, but they are converting to a religion where they are very much <laughs> secondary or even subjugated. Third. Yeah, like like they have less man, right. house, cat, woman. Yeah, they definitely have less <laughs> rights than a cat. Yeah, yeah, which is why we've converted to Islam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah a hundred percent that's so funny no it it is very funny like the most vocal because 
all those like feminists, they're all feminazis, you might call them. <laughs> they're all like, you know, they're usually the ones that are on the front lines of injustice. Of course. And it's re- injustice that has nothing to do with oh, that. <laughs> well, that's why they took over Black Lives Matter. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's just very funny that they're like fighting for the rights and like safety and life of islamic people in palestine yeah. who given the opportunity would like cover them head to toe and they're <laughs> yeah. not allowed to leave the house unless their man escorts them like yeah that's very funny yeah no it's great uh, it's it's always good to uh to research uh the injustice you're fighting yes <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have a, <clears throat> just somewhat of a handle on yeah things. a little bit <laughs> But no, because they have to be outraged about everything. In other words, they can't be outraged about something. Well, right? so it's not if it's not everything, you can't just pick and choose. Yeah. So they have to. But like, and because if they weren't outraged at all, then they wouldn't have attention. Exactly. And imagine from the men that they don't want the attention from. Correct. Correct. <laughs> anyway, this week's real ass dude of the week <laughs> is Aaron Bushnell. Aaron Bushnell. Man. Holy shit! Second real ass dude of the week. The Ooh. Either I'm I'm not sure if it was an actual cop or a security guard who uh, drew a I, firearm. I think it was a cop. I think it was an actual. Cop. I think it was a cop who pointed a loaded weapon at a guy engulfed in flames. Yeah, like if that isn't, <laughs> what can you even fucking say? A, a member of the U.S. Air Force, he was like a, I think like a cybersecurity ops guy. Yeah. I think like, but like in full uniform. Yeah. Uh, sa- saunters on down to the, uh, I believe the Israeli consulate in yep. D.C. Yeah. And uh, a fucking Tibetan monk sets his ass yeah. on fire. It, it took a minute too. Yeah, well, it's it, not. It's not like in, in movies. <laughs> the I mean, but once it lit, yeah. it was fast. Yes, but the lighter was like giving him a yeah. problem. He's probably nervous as shit. I guess you would be a little, yeah. even if you're like pretty resolute in what yeah. you're doing, which he was. Yep. Um, there's is something in you is maybe not going to flick the lighter the hardest you've ever no. flicked it. No. There's some... You're not doing one of those cool leg flicks. Like, <laughs> got it. Yeah. You there's know? still... It's, it's a real... <sighs> yeah. Okay. There's still like a little grain yeah. of self-preservation yeah. Yeah, like, in there. Everybody who tries to kill themselves will... Like, there's got to be that... Something. Split second yeah. of... Yeah. Um, did you see the way that, like, a lot of the mainstream liberal media covered it? I know uh, like they definitely... Like CNN and MSNBC? Uh, I don't know if it would have been them, because this seems more right-wing, but they definitely gave the fam- the fam his strongly Christian family a lot of play, mm-hmm. and they're like... Um, and they're like, oh, he was uh, he, uh, he had serious mental problems, and, and of course we support Israel. Yeah. I'm like, I wish he had killed you guys. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> Instead of himself. Yeah. Uh, he seems he seems like the only cool guy in your family. One hundred percent. I know CNN for sure. I'm pretty sure it was also MSNBC. Yeah, covered it as like uh, our, MSN, our, our, more our, like mainstream boob. <laughs> <laughs> no, pretty close. Uh, that he did it in protest of the Israeli Hamas war. Oh, in, that, that's, that's the, the way, way that they're they played phrasing it. it. They played it as if it's was, Israel versus the terrorists. Yes, that's right. the way that they played it up on their broadcast and coverage of it. I don't not, like that. Not that he actively was out there protesting the genocide, the genocide of, of Palestinians. Palestinians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, huh. And then there's all these people that are going online and like trying to paint a different picture of him. Mm-hmm. So there, there's one that I had found the other day that is... Uh, I don't even know who this is. Some Israeli, I don't know. He's, he's a reporter, an author, and a contributor for something. I don't know who he is. I'm technically all of those things uh, myself. That uh, he was a deranged pronoun using Antifa extremist who brought shame and disgrace to the uniform he was wearing. He was affiliated with anarchist groups, including Antifa. He was pro Hamas. Praised the October 7th attacks, calling it revitalizing. 
severely anti-Semitic, used pronouns and be- and belonged to an anarchist queer activist group, including Sever the People, Akron, an Ohio-based trans and LGBTQ plus extremist group. Yeah, because of those exist. Those, those, those terrorist gays. Yeah. Uh, brought shame and dishonor to service members in the armed forces by burning himself in uniform. He's that's the coolest thing you can do. Hundred percent. He's yeah. the coolest guy in the service. Could, the could service- have been civilian clothes. No, nope. the service lost their coolest guy that day. Yes, they did. Uh well, Dorner. Dorner. <laughs> he was. He was police though. I uh, was police. No, but yeah. he was also in the military, wasn't he? Maybe. I think he was. Okay. Uh, Bushnell previously mocked fallen service members in posts on the forums and Reddit. Uh, or was he just pointing out friendly fire statistics? <laughs> 100%. Could have caused serious injury to staff and police outside the Israeli embassy as the flames spread. On the concrete. His act was radicalized, has radicalized other Palestinian activists. Good. Who could lead to more people following in his footsteps. Good. Wouldn't you want that as the guy who's opposing this? Wouldn't you want more Palestinians to, to burn themselves alive? <laughs> yeah. He, uh, well, he's worried the people might hear about what's going on. <laughs> yeah. His act was praised by multiple foreign terrorist organizations, including Hamas and the Palestinian Liberation Front. Um... Here's a little piece of information. Uh, I don't think Hamas is doing a lot of anything currently. <laughs> uh, they're in a. Ra- I think they're in. A, they're, they're in a rebuilding year. It was it was a radical trans activist? He used a female pseudonym online of Lily and R Kitty. I like and, that. And affiliated with far left LGBTQ plus anarchist groups that used violence to push gender ideology. Again. I'm sure a hundred percent that's happening. Totally. Um, followed a certain anarchist groups on Facebook. <laughs> it's just wild how you're, you can go from like, uh, I don't know. The, this is why you got to stay off the internet. <laughs> Do you know how I know that guy is mentally retarded? Yeah. Pronoun using pronoun using. Yeah. Do you know who uses pronouns? Everybody, everybody. I, I I know what he's trying to get at. Yes, but he's but saying you're your wrong. Ar- your argument is stupid. I don't like because he because he is the kind of person who would say I, I don't like the weather outside either. <laughs> he's the kind of person who would say I don't use pronouns. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yeah. You just sometimes use the pronouns that the other person doesn't like. Correct. But you use pronouns. Yeah. You're using two of a select number. Yeah. Yeah. You're a selective pronoun user. Yeah. You're using, you You say he about people you think are male. Yeah. That's pronouns. pronouns. <laughs> you idiot. In fact, you probably use pronouns more than other people do. Yeah. 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 And you probably really emphasize those pronouns when you're talking about certain people. Yeah. Certain collegiate swimmers. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. So that's the real last dude of the week. Uh, pour one out for Aaron Bushnell. Donate to paypal.me slash not scott Anson in aaron bushnell's name fair that money will be put to a very good cause yes. i'm gonna tell you what good cause it will be pro-palestinian it will be pro-palestinian absolutely though. you will be oh, should we be saying this upon i don't know <laughs> i don't know 33 minutes in well you'll you guys you guys the listening audience will know if this was okay, if you're hearing this episode of the podcast, yes. If there, if you do not hear another episode of the podcast, if you guys have been taken out, if you guys in a couple weeks are wondering why didn't they do an Oscars for you, <laughs> you'll know that then we've you'll been know. taken out by a certain uh, political demographic, George Soros. George Soros. <laughs> Man, it is coming down. Yeah, I don't like what's happening. I don't think I'm actually getting home. I think it's hail. Uh, WCW prospect Emery Hale. Yes, he's back from the <laughs> dead. I think he's dead. I feel like every every late nineties like WCW power plant guy who was big is dead. I know, like physically big. Two thousand six, we lost him. Wow, how old was he? Like 30, 20? 36. Wow, yeah, we lost him. Lord Humongous, we lost him. Lord Humongous. Well, the, the second or third Lord Humongous, because the other one was Sid. Sid. Uh, apparently, he did some stuff. <laughs> Bad stuff? Uh, did he set himself on fire? 
In 2001, he signed with XWF. Jimmy Hart's promotion, I think. It was managed by Jimmy Hart yeah. and was groomed to be the top heel for the promotion. He went to the independence to become more humongous. He developed, died. developed pneumonia stemming from a kidney transplant and died of kidney failure at the age of 36. Huh. Couldn't have got another kidney? I guess if one's failing, then I guess they're reluctant to give you a second. Probably. Oh, huh. R.I.P. Emery Hale. This is this is the Emery Hale tribute episode. Aaron, the Aaron Bushnell slash Emery Hale tribute episode. Yeah. Um, speaking of Antifa, what a segue. Catboy. Antifa Catboy Ooh. has uh, recommended us two music videos. If you happen to have nope. the names of them, I don't. I don't. You do because you sent them to me in a message. I do, but th- that's your cue to find them. <laughs> okay, I got it. Also, because it was already loaded up because I put it on the TV, so I didn't even have to look at it. Yeah. Uh, what did he say? Uh, he didn't say anything. You I just, thought I, I thought I copied... you just sent me the links. Isn't there isn't there words around the links? That's uh, not a maybe you sent it earlier. I b- I bet there is. I bet you're wrong. The links say. Antifa there. Catboy requested two music videos. Yep. Video one, Be the Gal, early summer version by Hannah, Hannah B. B. Video two, Second Death by Black Tongue. Be sure to watch slash review them in this order for the proper Barbenheim experience. That's what he said. Oh, I thought you meant there would be like a write-up. That was the write-up. Of, it was short. One line. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we did, in fact, watch them in that order. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely Bar- Barben and then Heimer in that Correct. order. So Be the Gal, all caps GAL, uh, is a J-pop death metal. Gay at licking. <laughs> I'm pretty gay at licking. I'm pretty gay at licking. I mean, it's... I will say it's hard not to do, like like cat lick grooming and not look gay yeah there's a lot of straight grooming yourself yeah yeah it's it's especially once you get down in the nether regions (laughs) it's it's a hazard of the job i'm gonna lick my my inner lower thigh for a while for a while and clean myself but don't worry it's not gay i'm straight (laughs) yeah yeah, and I'm not I'm not bending my wrist at a 90 degree angle, licking it and then rubbing it all over myself. <laughs> Super butch. Very butch. <laughs> Very Pete Dunn. <laughs> uh so yeah, yeah, so be the gal is so it's these like but uh early summer version. Is there a is that is there a I feel like late, that's a late summer version? Yeah, I feel like that's a J-pop K-pop thing where these there's all these versions of the can, same song. And you can only listen to them at certain times of the year? I think so. I think you have to listen to them corresponding to time Let's of the year. Let's see if I can find a different version of that song. And not listen to it on the air, because then we'll get... It would be J-pop, who fucking cares? <laughs> it would be extra weird if there wasn't any other version. <laughs> and just the one version of the song is called Be the Gal Early Summer Version. <laughs> but, so it's these, like, I don't know, like nerdy japanese girls uh yes but nerdy in the sense that like uh, clearly they're not nerdy, super hot nerdy in the way them. that sydney sweeney is nerdy in madam web like oh she's got glasses yeah. what what a dork she's definitely not gonna show her amazing tits in five minutes does she no Damn. but in other stuff she does I, I think she does full penetration in euphoria i think she does too yeah You're right there does not appear to be any other version different version weird <laughs> that is weird so yeah so we got some fake nerd girls uh and they happen upon like a pool party invitation pamphlet yep <laughs> am, I, am i getting that correct and uh so they <clears throat> so they go to the pool party and uh they're nerdy but the people at the pool party are cool and they're like well this won't stand we have to take you for a makeover and then uh, they take them for a makeover. And while we're doing makeover montage, we transition from standard uh, all-girl J-pop to full-on, like, growling death metal by the girls. Yeah. Uh, which is very good. <laughs> very, yeah, very much baby metal. Yeah. But, which... like, even more, because, like, baby metal, they don't really do the growling, do they? Not it's more just, it's more than, bit, but yeah, it's not, more the yeah. music. It's more the music, yeah. Yeah, this is definitely the vocals yes. also. 
and then uh, they go, <laughs> they go back to the party, and now they're cool. But then other hot bitches show up. Yeah, I think they're supposed to be. They're the sharks to their jets. Yes, but what like ones. Har- Harkajuru girls and the other ones. Oh, I the guess. G- G- Gan- Ganjin girls or whatever the Perfect. Two for two. They are. I don't know. One, one's the uh, long fingernail gang. Ugh, I hate those fake fingernails. They're bad. They're so fucking stupid looking. Yeah. As someone who is. Imagine what you'd have to do to turn someone who's so pro claws against those long fingernails. Clearly, you're doing something wrong. Uh, very much so. Yeah. I'm not glittering up these bad boys. These nope. are for clawing. <laughs> exactly. These are for doing damage, not looking good. Exactly. They're functional. Like tails for looking good. <laughs> the tails for being pretty. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, they they show up, and of course, uh, what else is there to do other than DDR, DDR. dance battle? Uh, complete with like the actual DDR yeah, in, graphics. Yeah, in 2023. I think it's still big there. Probably is. I think it's like the national pastime still. Yeah, yeah, could be. I think not having sex and <laughs> and dance dance revolution yeah. are the two work, national pastimes of Japan. Work 15 hours a day. Yeah. Dance for 5, <laughs> sleep for 2. <laughs> get yeah. up, go back to work. Exactly. <laughs> it's a good system. Uh the uh the battle goes to a draw cuz they both do it perfect. Oh. Also, it was not high level <laughs> dancing. Well, the girls that we, they gave them the makeover yeah. were very much not dancing. No. They were just doing hand gestures. Yeah. Like the we, other girls were like dancing. We could have picked up that choreography in yep. one take. We could we could have sumoed our way through that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It was uh it was low uh, yes they may have got a perfect score but it was a low degree of difficulty yeah. they were on easy mode they were on beginner mode yes the other girls were on expert yeah <laughs> uh so yeah so they went to a draw they made friends and uh but that uh it was uh uh patrick duffy in dallas it was all a dream <laughs> is that it? yep that's the right reference yep. okay <laughs> yeah uh also what were the other all it was bob newhart did he maybe do an all a dream one and uh, what else? Last season of Roseanne. Yeah. Or it was like a book she was writing. It was a book she was writing. Uh, and there's maybe one. Uh, oh, and then the entirety of the Saint final. Elsewhere was imagined by an autistic kid looking at a snow globe. Yes. Uh, which in turn, because of all the Saint Elsewhere spinoffs and crossover, it's the, the Tommy Tommy retard shared universe yep. Yep. <laughs> of like. 170 like major network yes. shows were canonically all, canonically all imagined by this autistic yeah. kid, yep. <laughs> which is awesome. Pretty good. That's a whole episode. The uh, now I want to look it up. If I go Tommy Shared Universe, I'll get it. I just don't yeah. remember the last name. Well, and also there's uh, the the end of Twilight, uh, the movie Savages. Oh, like the the fake outs, because Twilight yeah. was a fake out. Yeah. The Tommy well, it was we- a vision, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It, it what, was a vision. Fucking whatever. Yeah. The Tommy Westfall shared universe. Right. Hypothesis is a theory that blah, blah, blah. Uh, somewhere there's like a, a flow chart of it. Yeah, That's like, fl- it's, yeah, we looked at the flow chart. It's nuts. I love like, it. And it like goes... It goes to like shows that are like before, before St. Elsewhere because yeah, like some, some people from yeah from like previous shows showed yeah. up there or something or they were they could have even been watching something on TV yeah yeah yeah, yeah like and it goes kind of farther forward too right I mean like, I, th- I think it goes the, up to like current stuff I think the entire Law and Order universe is that's crazy because I think there's a I think there's a Homicide Life on the Street crossover in St. Elsewhere and then Homicide and Law and Order have a crossover. Because I, I think uh, I think Belzer is in all of them. That's <laughs> Just wild. playing himself with his dumb tinted glasses. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. I'm glad he's dead. You know what? Me too. I'm glad Hulk Hogan I'm glad Hulk Hogan kills ass. him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you guys haven't seen Hulk Hogan legitimately uh, hurting Richard, Richard Belzer, Belzer is on, so... on live television. How much money did he make from that? Like, t- like $10 million? He did okay. Yeah. He did okay. <laughs> um... So yeah, so the uh, the pool party was all imagined by the uh, by the dumb uh, pretend ugly girls. Is that the, that's the flowchart? It's flowchart. It's huge, right? Jesus Christ! 
It, it, and it, it is, is all centered around St. Elsewhere yeah. and Homicide Life in the Streets. Okay, so that's, like that, the, that, that's, that's the, the big cross. That's the big cross. Well, and then everything gotcha. goes out from there. Yeah. But like, is there things that are... I'm sure. I'm sure like the Carol Burnett show. Is yeah. Like... <laughs> I wish it was like broken up to like year. Yeah. But like, yeah, fucking Mork and Mindy. Yep. Ellen. That... Ellen? Like her sh- her show, yeah, yeah, or like her Spin sitcom. City, <laughs> nice. Uh, Just like every the, lo- the lone gunman, meaning the X Files is part of it. Wow, because there's some connection between Homicide, Life on the Streets, and X Files. Amazing. The Wire, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> Doctor Who, <laughs> uh, Star Trek, all the Star Trek universe, yes. Frasier, <laughs> Frasier, Matlock, Touched by an Angel, Jag. Uh, the original Mission Impossible show. Wow. Archie Bunker's place. All in the family. All in the family. Oh, yeah. The, the all, Adams family. Batman. Because All in the family has got spin out because that would have the Jeffersons. Uh, yep. Something else. Four, yeah. 704, Hauser, Maud, Good Times, Hanging yep. In, Soap, Benson, Gloria. They're all spinoffs of All in the Family. Hogan's Heroes, Green Acres. <laughs> like... This is Boy Meets World. Yes. Perfect Strangers. Nice. <laughs> Happy Days. Man, like, that's... Yeah, that's... Oh, you, you could fall down such a hole with Boston that. Boston Public. Hell yeah, Boston Degrassi. Public. Degrassi. <laughs> Regular or... All. <laughs> Degrassi Universe. Ally McBeal. Yep. The John Larroquette Show. Hell yeah. Oh, that's so... Cheers... Mad about you, friends. Yeah, I was going to say if Frasier is, then Cheers is. Dick Van Dyke. Oh, man, this is, yeah, this is pretty crazy. Yeah. I would, I'd like to read the list of connections, though. Yeah. That would be pretty wild. I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure it is. I'm sure I could have kept looking. Yep. Anyways. Uh, anyway, so the bitches uh, wake up from their dream and uh, crumple up the pamphlet and uh, head on their way. Yeah. Not, like, e- gee, not even knowing how hot they they're are. They're like, gee, I don't need to be any hotter than I already completely <laughs> fucking am. Yeah. We're a bunch of Sydney Sweeney's with glasses. Showing uh, their pussies. Now you explain the second video. <laughs> so the the Heimer of the, of the Barbenheimer. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is the Heimer. Was... What I can only describe as, and I hope I don't insult Antifa Capway, and that this is secretly his band. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the most film school, make your own music video for your music I've ever seen. Uh, this is uh, Second Death by Black Tongue. The only way that I can describe I'm going to get us a treat while you describe is, it. Is it's uh girls playing with pentagrams yep. to in theory awaken her dead friend i guess and then but when think, no because one of the girls but her friend is like laying there like unconscious or asleep in the pentagon pentagram oh maybe and so in theory, I thought she was dead and she was bringing her back to life. I, that's why she craved the flesh of the dog. I, I guess so. Although at first... Was it the... Well, which flesh? That's the thing, is I also thought maybe that something... Maybe she's just a white girl and wants to fuck that dog. That dog. <laughs> so, um... The music was mostly just... Uh... Grumbles. It was, yeah, it was full full grumble death metal. Full, full grumble death metal, and it was garbage. And <laughs> but you said you would have thought this was hella cool. Yeah, I, was like, I can't believe that 2005 me would have liked this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so she goes back to live with her family, and the, the weird thing is, it's filmed like a short film. Yes. All of the characters are talking, but like it's you just don't the music you don't just music yeah. you don't hear or see, uh, except for at a certain point where there's very well, there's important dialogue that you need to understand. <laughs> so they put subtitles of what the characters are saying. <laughs> yeah. Of the one girl who brought the other girl back to life, saying, "I don't want to die." Yeah. And the other girl goes, "I have an idea." And then they just go to the pentagram and do more magic, <laughs> more witchcraft. And then the, her family like kills her. Well, the girl keeps eyeing knives. Yeah, and nobody trusts her. And uh, eyeing knives and the dog and the dog. <laughs> and you never know what that means. Yeah, that could mean she wants to eat the dog, or I mean she might want to try and make puppies. <laughs> yeah, 
And then like, yeah, like the brother shows up with like a bit of blood on his shirt. Yep. But you can't, you don't understand don't what the really fuck he's talking about. Why? Yep. And then they're like, yeah, you're right. We should we, probably re-kill her. We should re-kill our daughter. <laughs> She's had it too good for too long. <laughs> yeah. Her second life is over. Yeah. <laughs> so they, yeah, they like. I don't know, like, grapple her to the ground until she's dead? Mm -hmm. Like, they don't actually do anything. Maybe they stab her, because, like, there's blood coming out of her mouth at the end. Yeah. But they don't show anything. Who's the fucking no? And then, so the friend sees that her friend has been re-murdered, and, uh... Gets all sad. I'm like, just bring her back from the dead. You already did it Worked once. once. You get to do it twice. You've proven magic I, exists. Well, I, was say, I don't think that black magic has a one time and you're done. Yeah, it's policy. not like giving Emery Hale a kidney. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you one, two. one fails, you do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, P. Emery. <laughs> Lord Humongous 2. Yep. Yeah. Um,. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, then they she starts doing some witchcraft at the pentagram. Yep. And uh, end of statement. And that's the end. <laughs> yeah. So that was that. Thank you for those, Catboy. And thank you for the uh, for the unpaid work you do for us sometimes. That's why yeah. I was not pushy about paying very little for these. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that we had seen that second one in IMAX. On 70 mil, like we saw Oppenheimer. I saw Dune 2 in IMAX. Cool! Did it set up that there was going to be a third one? They can definitely do more, but they actually, like, mm. ended some stuff. Cool. And we got Austin Butler <gasps> as the bad guy. Was he still doing Elvis he voice? He was Elvis. And he was dressed as Elvis, which was Scott, weird. I can't stop doing the voice. <laughs> I've tried and I can't stop. I don't think you tried. I, I, I don't think you tried at all, Austin. I've been, I think you're doing this for attention. I've been to doctors and they can't figure it out. <laughs> I think you're a girl and you're doing this for attention. Yeah, it was it was definitely better than part one. And also, I mean, watch, part one's pretty good. I part, just, part one looks good, but like there's a setup in watching. Like, it, part one is very much a part one. Yeah, and like part one's long. But like part one's also like probably close to three uh, hours. It's close to three. Yeah, yeah. It's like and like two forty. Yeah, and in watching part two, I'm like, oh, from like from where we are here, we could have gotten here in twenty minutes. Mm. Like it, it could have been Dune one and two could have been one three hour movie. Okay. E- easy. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, it was, it was good. More happened. But how, uh, but then if they didn't do one, how would they set up definitively that a character is dead, mm-hmm. only for them to not be dead in the second one? Hmm. Interesting. Because that's what. Spoiler, that's what happens, right? Who? Josh Brolin. Oh, he is alive. Yeah. Yeah, he's fine. He's in the fucking trailer. Yeah, yeah. He died in the first one. Yeah, I forgot about that. So fucking dumb. Yeah, he's fine. He's totally fine. I hate that. I don't think they even mentioned it. (laughs) Probably not. I think he just showed up. Yeah. (laughs) It's a a real Colin Firth in Kingsman Golden Circle, where he like Mm. very clearly like died on screen (laughs) in the first movie. Yeah. And that for the second movie, he's in the trailer. Yeah. As I recall, the... The first one's pretty fun, and the second one's no good. Yeah, yeah. And then the prequel one, is, the King's Man, is very different. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like old, like it's set in the in World War One or around World War One. Okay, somewhere around there. And then, but the first one, uh, what's his fucking name? Taron Egert? No, he's the other one. No, I think that is him. Is it him? Because the the other guy it could be is Ansel Elgort. Right? It's not and Ansel Elgort. Him. He's canceled. A, he's a baby driver. Yeah. And a baby fucker, which is why he doesn't get to be in Baby Driver 2. <laughs> That's true. He's, yeah. He, also, he, I don't think he did anything, right? I think he was just like bad boyfriend. I think he was canceled. bad boyfriend. Yeah. I think there's bad boyfriend canceled. And then yeah. there's like trying to eat people on a boat canceled. Which is also not that bad. Not that bad. Not that bad. You could do worse. Like he did, Okay. Leave Army Hammer alone. You, you could be the producer of your name and be a child pornographer. That is, that's true. And, or apparently the, uh, like the manga artist <gasps> of. A Ma- manga artist is a creep? I, of Made in Abyss. Oh. Because like, apparently, uh, as per YouTube comments, the, the, the anime is a very good adaptation of the manga, just leaving out a lot of the nudity that would get, uh, the artist put in jail if he lived anywhere other than japan <laughs> right explains a lot of why the last season was a lot of uh babies that are infertile yeah 
Babies not having babies. Babies not having babies. Big... Until they start having babies. Having babies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nope. How nope. did we get here? I don't... Uh... <laughs> Uh, oh, getting canceled. Sorry. So, like, oh. Ter- Taron Egger, uh almost died filming the first one. Oh, really? Because there was like a scene where they having f- flood a room. Was it having uh, off-screen anal sex, as was alluded to at the end of the first one? <laughs> That's how he almost died. Because he's well, because he was preparing for his role as he, Elton John. He's so method, yeah, <laughs> that he actually fucked that girl in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it was not shown on screen and was only a joke at the end of the movie. Yep. And also, that's how you get AIDS. Heterosexual anal sex. Ask magic. That's why I got so much AIDS. Um, <laughs> from all those women. That's why I got so much AIDS. <laughs> but yeah, he almost died filming the first one because they like flood a room. Oh. And he like almost drowned because there was some kind of malfunction. Not, not unlike Isla Fisher in Now You See Me. I would be fine with that. Although... <laughs> No, she's kind of annoying, but I feel bad for. But they re- Sasha. They replaced her with uh, Lizzie Kaplan in Now You See Me Too, so I was not mad at it. No, you are mad at it because it's not called the right thing, Scott. You see him now. You see him now. <laughs> Inside you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, have you seen Now You See Me Too? No. Why would I? Holy the shit! The first one was a piece of shit, dude. Two is so much worse. Oh. It's crazy. It's crazy right, how bad I'll, it is. I'll watch it if it's on Tubi. I mean, like it's, but it's not like a fun bad. What, like we comment, oh, gotcha. like we commentated one, and it was a fun commentary, and then we did two shortly after, and we fucking hated it. I can't watch it because it's on Netflix. I can only watch it if it was on Tubi. Fair, yeah. It uh, it sucks, but uh, well, it's directed by an, a Chinese guy. Uh, yeah, it's the guy who Crazy Rich Asians. Crazy rich yes. Asians. <gasps> yeah. Tubi got a new logo. Oh my god! Big Look day. Look at that. Uh, yeah, because the first one's directed by the guy who did the transporter, and yes. like 15 minutes into two, we we are begging for transporter director to come back because <laughs> it clearly is crazy rich Asians director. Oh, Tubi you got a new layout and everything. God, you're beautiful. <laughs> this is an important day. Big day. Herb Abrams. Hey. Because it wants me to continue watching uh, Dark Side of the Ring because it's all ah, so on there. Nice. Anyways. Um, sample of a crappy drink? Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, so we have a new flavor of Coke, but it is not under the Coca-Cola Creations umbrella. Is it designed by AI? I think this was designed by a person. Or maybe commit. Maybe it's designed by committee, committee, which is no. never good. Never works. Um, we have. It's called Coca Cola Spiced, and it is a raspberry spiced flavored cola, uh, which Eve uh, first brought to my attention that it exists, and then shortly after told me it sucks. So sounds like it would suck. We shall. I mean, I like because they make that raspberry Coke. Yep. Which is good. It's okay. I, I like it, which is strange because on the on those uh, make your own bullshit drink machines with yep. the ten million flavors, yep. I think the first thing I ever made on one was raspberry coke, yep. and it sucked. Mm. It wasn't right. By the way, always vanilla sprite, guys. Correct answer. Always vanilla sprite. Um, you might but, not think we were telling you the truth. No, no, no. But. It's delicious. Um, yeah, but then they put out like act, those like glass bottle. Uh, right. Uh, they did the, well in Canada. They did a ra- uh, raspberry and a maple. Maple. And in the states, there's I a think blackberry one. I think in the states. Oh, really? Uh, states I know. I know there's at least a raspberry and a peach. Mm, I think there's a blackberry one. Very well. I'm pretty sure I've seen it. I I would try it. We'll have to look next time we go. In, also, uh, in next week, two weeks, next week. I've maybe had the peach, or I've had some sort. Well, I, I've had. Uh, I think it's an actual drink. I think it's called Georgia Iced Tea, uh, Coke, Peach, Schnapps, and Lime. Delicious. Mm. It's really good. Um, so, yeah. So, that's that. And this is Coke Spiced. <laughs> the only other spiced cola I've had is the uh, 2002 limited run of Pepsi Holiday Spice, which I remember being delicious. You talk about it a lot. Would love to try you again. You talk about it too much. I talk about I it. You're obsessed. <laughs> I think you have a fetish for that. I don't have a fetish. Well, a fetish is just something you think about all the time. Like, oh, I guess I have a fetish. (laughs) (laughs) Smells okay. 
All right. It smells better than Eve described it tastes. But maybe there's a, uh, to quote you from last week, a disparity <laughs> between the smell and the taste. <laughs> yep. So close. I, madam, am not mad at this flavor. Okay. I think it's solid. I, especially on the uh, on the f- flavored Coke in the last two years scale, it's like a, a eleven. You can keep you can keep it. It's okay, but I don't think I would. I like it. it all right. I don't know if I'm gonna buy another one. Yeah, you say that now, and then you're gonna be like, I think I should try it again just to see if it's good. Well, I did that with the bad ones. <laughs> you did that. I have had two Coca Cola Ultimates yep. and two Coca Cola Y three thousands. You've let AI dictate what you drink twice. <laughs> That's true. Neither... So who's the real fool? Well, here's the thing. I, I I'm okay. Y three thousand. Our business is concluded. Never again. I kind of want a third Coca Cola Ultimate because the first two <laughs> tasted so different from each other. So maybe like the next batch will be better. Every batch is different. I don't even know if okay. they're, I don't think they're making it anymore. I haven't seen but, it, but like the first one tasted like Coke flavored Coke. Yeah. Coke flavored Coke. And then the second one, there was definitely like a fruit involved. It was yep. entirely different. Yeah. So I can't even explain to you what Coke ultimate is and probably never will. But Coke all spiced. It's pretty. It, it feels more raspberry than spiced. It is. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. <laughs> It's two uh, cards on the table. That hurt. Didn't hurt. It contained a little bit of puke. (laughs) Enough that I could swallow it easily. (laughs) But but I now definitely need another sip of this to wash down down the the vomit taste in my throat. The stomach acid that's in your throat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That uh, let me tell you. Versus vomit, this is very good. <laughs> this is some of the some of the best non-vomit flavored cola I've had in my time. That's pretty good. All right, so this is the Oscars preview episode, <laughs> and I took a look. We uh, history does seem to be repeating itself because I took a look at last year's Oscars preview episode, which is labeled. All caps, emergency Oscars preview, because we, we forgot. forgot we were going to do it until that week. Yeah. And guess what also happened <laughs> this year? Uh, the same thing. Uh, we were going to uh, do the season of anime that is on the table for us from, I believe, a JB Hutt, uh, Killing Bites, if y'all want to get a head start on it. And, uh, and then we're like, oh. These episodes come out on Monday, and next Monday is the last Monday before the Oscars. So if we were going to do the Oscars, we should probably do it this week. And uh, and we reached a quorum, <laughs> and, uh, and the die was cast. And... Uh, and then, yeah, and I, I looked at that episode also, and I noticed it was a three hours and 36 minutes long. I don't know how we did that. Well, I scrubbed through it, and the part of the reason for it, I think, I'm not positive, is that we did not start talking about the Oscars at all until close to the two-hour mark. We had So we are an hour ahead of time. Yeah, we had some snacks. We had, like, multiple snacks. It must have been after a wrestling show, and Eve brought us stuff. Um, and then just a lot of other nonsense. Huh. Uh, however, some of that nonsense was important. The one I happened to, uh, scrub to in the timeline was, I believe this is the one year anniversary of us like cementing our sort of five year plan, which was, uh, get extremely expensive fursuit. Also, get the uh, get the trans for surgery. Wear the suit over yourself, and people come up to you and say, "Well, sure, 
that's the coolest fursuit I've ever seen. But I bet you're still a dork underneath. And then, ba-boom, head off, surgery face, even better under than in. <laughs> a lot of prepositions. <laughs> like, even better suit off than suit on. And then, go and live in the woods. <laughs> It, it Never to be seen again. As good a plan a year ago as it is today, yep. uh, if not better today. That is yep. still very much the plan. And of course, expensive fur suits and expensive surgery are expensive. Correct. So those how can they? How can they help us with that? Those require money that we don't currently have, and maybe you do in partial or full. Look, if you want to send us. Just the full bill. <laughs> yep. For both, by all means. Could send us twenty dollars a week every week until we have enough money to get <laughs> both. Yeah, you could do that. Um, <laughs> PayPal.me slash not Scott Henson. Same as I said at the beginning, and same as I'll say at the end. We're doing beginning, middle, end now. Good. And that might get annoying, but if you send enough, we'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, like there's new a, recording space. There's a, the surgery suit, the ex- most expensive suit you can. Living quarters in the woods. Living quarters <laughs> in the woods. That's it. Done. Those are all the then things. We'll stop asking. If we get those things, yeah. we, we but are. It's up to us to decide how much those things cost. Well, obviously, yeah. we're not idiots. No. <laughs> but there, you don't get to dictate the cost of my <laughs> hot knife to my flesh. <laughs> but there is an end to it. It's not. It. It is not us asking for money indefinitely forever. Once we get the things, we're done. And we are out of your damn hair, and you can move on to something more important in your life. Anything. What are you pulling I'm out of your I'm covered in Korean lady hair. <laughs> you sure it's not Japanese, Taiwanese, or Mongolian? Dirty <laughs> or dirty knees? No, it's Korean. Okay. Good. All right. I'm so, going to read you... That was that. Do I have any other Bottom to top. Let me let me look. I'm reading at everybody's it. name who's nominated for every category. I, I okay, fine. Me, I won't I, do that. I don't know what we're doing. Let me let me see if I had any other important orders of business. Uh, Aaron Bushnell, real last dude of the week. <laughs> um, oh, one one other very tiny thing. Uh, sh- shout out to uh, Cole, uh, who uh, recognized me when I was getting coffee at Revolver the other week. I don't get recognized often, Big but it's day for you. But it's fun when I do, and it was for the podcast, and not, not wrestling, uh, not wrestling, and not Adam, Adam. stuff. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, he, uh, he also mentioned Adam stuff, but like first thing he said was love the podcast, ah. and mentioned you by name as well. So pretty cool. So way to go, Cole. Keep listening. Send some money. Hey. Uh, hey. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that's all the things. Now you can read every nominee. Good. Without stopping. And don't say what categories. Just read all the nominees in the order of your choosing. And go. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go from bot- bottom up from Wikipedia. Should we make uh, the same joke we made when you said that literally that literal same thing last year? Uh, started as a bottom, now I'm top. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you why would you want to? Why would you choose? Top's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean well, unless... there's a reason it's like a 95 to 5 ratio bottom to top. Yeah, that's true. Cuz every gay Or is uh, lazy. or or 19 to 1 if we're uh, reducing fractions. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz all gay guys are lazy. All gay guys are lazy. I agree. Gazy. Gazy. Foo gazy. Mm. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> all right, uh best visual effects. You've got the creator, Godzilla minus one. Here's the other thing I was gonna say. I was gonna say it. It's related to what we're doing now. I'm not. I'm not. Ten, I'm not tangentializing. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say it off, but um, no. Now I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> that no. It's uh. Is it back? Hmm. I wish my brain was just like a little better. It's snowing. I know it's snowing. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy oh, Volume Three. Shut up! It's back. <laughs> if you say any more words, it'll be gone again, <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> no. So last year, I did my predictions uh-huh. as is in the contract, <laughs> yes. as is required by law. And between the time we did it and the time that we commentated the Oscars yeah. live, I changed. changed a few. Yeah. 
every change was wrong, as I recall. Okay. And that that's I wanted to go back and hey, if someone has just slightly more time than me, uh, check out my picks from our from our episode a year ago and then check out my picks on the Oscars live stream we did because I one I would be curious to know if all of my changes were wrong or if I had maybe one that was good and also if I possibly got every single one right on this podcast <laughs> cuz I did I did very well even with the wrong changes like I smoked everyone yeah on on the stream yeah um and that was with changing some wrong hmm. so i i think i like crushed it on the podcast and i hope to do the very same this year just absolutely nail it on the podcast and do worse but still way better than everyone else <laughs> on the stream and that is the bargain and if anyone cares to see the stream it'll be on i guess the yms watch alongs channel on uh, the day of the Oscars, which is what? The 10th? 10th. Yeah. So this, when you're listening to it, this Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's it. And then th there'll be an edited version in, I don't know, six months uh, on the regular YMS channel. So enjoy it with my compliments. Visual effects, you say? <laughs> the creator. Gojira minus one. The creator, you mean... Oh, uh. yes. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, although it's not, it's not what it's called anymore. It's oh, just called Dead Reckoning. They Why do they keep changing Tom Cruise movies? I don't know, because he's a picky little boy. He's a I, picky little beaver. <laughs> that's true. He, uh, he, used to, he used to think he liked women. Yep. Now he's then not he got, sure. Then he got real picky. Uh, and finally, Napoleon. Visual effects. I mean, it looked good, I guess. I will say I liked Napoleon more. Actually, I thought of a very funny review for it on Letterboxd, but I don't want to do it because it's committing to a thing I don't actually believe in. Because um, I want my review to be, um, I was expecting a four, but I got a six, so I'm giving it a seven. <laughs> but I don't actually want to give Napoleon seven out of ten. Mm. Like, I want... like. Yeah. I'd give it six, yeah. but uh, the six is a lot better than I, I, I was expecting bad. All I and heard was, was bad. I know. That's all anybody would say is that it was terrible. Yeah. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I was just with, because I was with Shane, a, a guy who has maps of the Napoleonic Wars on his wall, <laughs> but also he should be the most critical mm -hmm. and he thought it was good. Yeah. So and here we are. And the thickest thighs. And, oh, the games to die games for. Games to die for. Uh, well, I'll tell you how Napoleon is after I watch Boss Baby 2. Boss Baby 2, Napoleon. That's my plan. That's a hell of a double feature. Double feature. Bam, bam. Uh, it's between two for this. So are we saying who we... We're just saying who we think is we were, we, You can absolutely comment on who you'd like yeah. to win, but we are, we are predicting who we think will win. Gotcha. Are you... Uh, are you waiting for me? The end. <laughs> um, I think it's between two for who's going to win. The same person is nominated for two. Oh, really? Mission Impossible and Napoleon involves the same person. And isn't winning either. Yep. I think it's between Creator and Gojira. I don't think they're giving it to Gojira. No? I think the nomination was enough, but I don't think they're giving it to Gojira. I think it's going to the Creator. I think Creator. Yeah. I think... I think because you have to think in very, for the voters, you have to think in very simplistic terms as will come up even stronger later. But with the, the, the m people with missing parts of their head yeah. in the creator, they're going to see that. They're going to think, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You win. Yeah. I also am not 100% convinced that the voters for the Academy of Motion Picture watch Sciences everything. watch everything and especially things that are foreign language. Yeah. Even even though Godzilla got the talk of the town. Yeah. Uh, I still don't believe that they that most of them have seen it. I still don't understand the title of it. Because it's minus one Godzilla. No. There's one Godzilla. <laughs> but it should be two gods. I don't know. <laughs> um 
It got lost in the translation from Japanese to English. It got lost in translation when Bill Murray whis- whispered it to whispering. Scarlett Johansson. He was whispering to Scarlett Johansson what Godzilla minus oh, one Oh, no! Then. I want you to know what it is! Bill, <laughs> tell me! Uh, yeah, I think the creator. I think, yeah, you're right. Like, the visuals of the uh, missing chunks of their heads is going to be enough for those nerds to yeah. go, oh, How'd they do that? Although, With green uh, screen, you retard. Well, Guardians of the Galaxy had talking animals, so... Although, I don't like talking animals. Uh, is but, it... And you said it's... Because I haven't watched it yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said it's not worth watching just for the furry world? Or is it worth watching? It's a, yeah, I mean, it's uh, depressing as fuck, and you'll probably cry. I see. Because at the furry world? At the furry world. Oh, really? Because it's good, but it's also... the the uh, There's not a lot of... G- not the right kind of featured players. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... No, I mean, Fur- Furry World is pretty fun. But okay. Yeah, I think the movie itself will, uh, will wreck. Wreck, wreck your life. Yep. Um, best costume design. Uh, Barbie. Killers of the Flower Moon. Napoleon again. Oppenheimer. Poor things. Yeah. I think... Here's what I think. I think both this and production... Design are between the same two movies. I agree. And I think they're going to split it. I... And, and I think they're going to go costume for Barbie. Oh. Cause, okay. Because Barbie wears clothes. I guess that is a, a statement. And Poor Things isn't necessarily about, about clothes. clothes. But it's very pretty. <laughs> yes. So... That can get production. It deserves both, but it's not getting both. I think they both deserve both. That's the thing. But I, obviously, you can't do in, that. But. In a year where only one of them exists, mm-hmm. easy. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, but it's tough. Here's okay. I, I and also I am very much not sure about production because I think they think the Barbie world and the house and stuff that's going to cater very well to the voters. But poor things just like looked so fucking cool. Here's, I don't know if this is how the voters will think, but this is how I personally think. I'm a voter. That's I'm what a they voter. Think. Uh, is he Jewish? In the academy, never. Not anymore. It's not allowed. They have to diversify. It's a bunch of black ladies. It's now. just Issa Rae. <laughs> 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 she's the academy that was quite the poll i like that um no i think in for me for me personally how about misa ray and it's jar jar Banks? <laughs> <laughs> that the costumes for barbie like visually yes they look good mm-hmm. mm, this is a this is a bad take to have no i don't think so i love a bad the take. the thing with the barbie costumes is you're not designing Barbie costumes. You're using costumes that already exist in the world of the figure, it's of the, the toy. It's the adapted screenplay of costumes. 100%. Also, Barbie being adapted screenplay is fucking That's nonsense. That's pretty stupid. Adapted from a, a doll. A, a doll, yeah. <laughs> adapted from a visual what? look. Yeah. There's no source material. Yeah, it's a doll. The back of the packaging. <laughs> the trademark. The trademark, yeah. But like, yeah, for Barbie, like for for costume design for me is like, here's a character, create the visuals of what the character looks like, design the costumes based on that character. But for Barbie, it's like, okay, well, in 1988, this Barbie had like knee high socks and rollerblades and a pink that right. Like, yeah, you're you're just taking something that's already been created and just making an adult human being movie version of it. Yeah. They're not designing the character. There's so much more creativity in poor things. I think poor things should win. I think Barbie will win. Also, should we be nope. writing these down nope. for... Nope. Are you sure? I don't think we did last year. Did we? I don't think we did. I guess we didn't. Fine. Somebody will listen and do it for us. You know what? Antifa Catboy. We yeah. do those music videos on the cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Write a list of who we pick for all these. Yeah. Um, no, I, I still think that there's enough old mentality, even though they've kind of like cleared out a lot of the old dudes in Hollywood in the voting. Harvey? Harvey. No, noted uh, guy who desperately needs that walker. Bo- uh, Bob's still okay though, right? 
Yeah, nobody hates Bob. Okay. Bob didn't do anything wrong. I still think there's enough people of the old mentality that the visual look of poor things will still get it the win. I do, I, I hope it does. I still I, I think I think poor things will win. Barbie. And I also want final Barbie. answer. Uh, best film editing. Uh, Anatomy of a Fall. The Holdovers. Killers of the Fire Moon. Oppenheimer. Poor things. This one's tough for me. I think it's down to two, but I don't know which two I uh, or which one wins of the two. It I think Oppenheimer for sure is the contender contender. Yes. Because it's what Chris Nolan likes to do. Yeah. Because he's a big old loser. Mm-hmm. Um I really like the way the anatomy of a fall was cut together. Yes. Uh the the the, the sort of flashing back and the visuals of everything yeah. was very, very good. Yeah, I don't think Oppenheimer necessarily should win. I do think it's going to I think yeah, that's the thing is I, I don't think it deserves swing, especially because it'll win other stuff. Yeah. But I, I would give it to Anatomy of a Fall or Poor Things. I think Opp- yeah, I think you're right. Oppenheimer wins. I want Anatomy of a Fall to win. Yeah. Uh best hair makeup and hair styling. Uh, Golda, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, Society of the Snow, which even though I've seen it, every time I hear the title, I go, what the fuck is that? And then I go, oh, right. It's a lie. I was going to say, what if it was called Alive yeah, 2? But I, I, every time I see the title, I go, what is that? And yeah. then I go, oh, oh duh, yeah. I've seen it. It's too fancy a title for people eating each other in Chile. Yes. Argentina, Chile, uh, Uruguay, Paraguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, Mexico. It's all Mexico. It's all Mexico. You're all Mexico. <laughs> you Mexico touchers. The people look like ants from up here. They <laughs> are ants. <laughs> uh, we talked about this in the car because we were talking about how this is one a, of these... this is an historic year. Yes. Two nominations on the books for jew face <laughs> brad cooper jewed up helen mirren Jude even up. more jewed up yeah jewed up from the boots up um i don't know who i think will win i know who i think it will better win. not be fucking maestro maestro's winning yeah, I mean, he looked really good, but I don't want that movie to get anything. No, I, I don't either. What, one, yes, he looked good. Uh, Helen Mirren looked better. Yeah. Like, when I the first trailer I saw for Golda, I'm like, did they just somehow dig up Golda My Ear? Because it just looked like Golda My Ear. I'm like, oh, shit, it's Helen Mirren, and she looks just like her. Whereas Brad Cooper, you still know it's Brad Cooper, just jewed up <laughs> but what uh yeah what, you're you're right i mean <sighs> what should win i, I mean think, i think poor things could willem win. looked fucking cool yeah, I, think, poor things. I think willem looked really good i think the way that they kind and there was of the hairstyling well and like yeah. the ma- the madness that they made mark ruffalo go through like his, yeah, yeah. his evolution yeah. of his look was really good I knew even her, like even Emma Stone, like, you know, her, her, some of her like visual, like hair and her face and everything. Like, yeah, I would, I I would, I'm just going to give everything the poor things, but uh, yeah, I I mean, Maestro, I think. I mean, I would be, it would be very cool with me if poor things won like 14 Oscars. Good. (laughs) That rock. It won't. Um, So we're we're both saying Maestro. uh, Yeah. yeah, I'm saying uh, poor things or Golda should win. uh, Maestro is winning. Uh, best cinematography is El Condi, which no one saw. Nope. Flowers of the Killer Moon, Maestro. Flowers Op- of the Killer Moon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, know, I know. you know what a cinematographer is known, known for? Um, their natural outdoor lighting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was more commenting on the way you worded the title. Yeah. There it is. We figured it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Killers of the Fire Um, Maestro, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. Uh, I mean, I think it's probably Oppenheimer's to lose, but it should be poor things. Uh, that's exactly right. Um, Oppenheimer is going to be, I think it's going to be winning a lot of the technicals Technical. and, uh, as well as others, uh, but maybe not, uh, deserve as many as it wins. 
I agree. Yeah, I think it's kind of hard with something that relies so heavily on new new technologies and the the nerdiness of the director filming <laughs> things in a way that is very specific for these kind of awards. The you autism know? of the director. Yeah. Um, it's finally paying off. It's Oppenheimer. He'll finally have more Oscars than Kobe Bryant. <laughs> you did it, Chris. Congratulations. Uh, best sound and three six mafia. <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> uh, it's very funny as of right now. <laughs> what people have more Oscars than Christopher Chris Nolan? Nolan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, I think the Academy aims to fix that. I think I, yeah. uh, Oppenheimer is Nolan's uh, departed for Scorsese. Yeah, they're like, oh, you made like. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You made, like, a lot of movies better than this that we never gave you shit. Well, it's Leo with The Revenant. And Leo with The Revenant, 100%. Yeah. Um, and, but, De- uh, and Denzel with Training Day, although I really like Training Day. He's pretty Day. sick in Training Day. But uh, but he probably should have got something before that, yeah. too. Um, yeah, it's them saying it, it, it's a real better late than never award. 100%. Yeah. Which is kind of what a lot of the awards a have lot been for are. the last, like... 20 years yeah. of just like oh oh yeah sorry the, the last two movies this person's made have been worse than what the ones before well I'll just give it to him now just give it uh so yeah be- best sound guess uh, what which used to be best sound design wasn't there it? there used to be two yeah and, but and then <laughs> eventually enough was enough nobody fucking knew no. what they were about there yeah there was maybe sound, sound des- editing and sound design yeah, yeah which nobody understood what either was I think it was very much the right move to make one best yeah. sound because people still don't even know how to properly vote for best sound. Not really. But at least there's only one now. And normally one movie would win both. Occasionally they'd and occasionally yeah. they'd split between the two they couldn't decide on. Because yeah. I remember there was a split between uh, Ford versus Ferrari and the other one that uh, year. And like there yeah. was no rhyme or reason no. to why which one was. No. Well, and like w- one is very much like the atmospheric uh like m- like scorey musically kind of like yeah. not not the score but like the 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 yeah like the atmospheric ad- sound adjustment to things yeah. to like lower and raise things mm-hmm. and the other one is is essentially like sound effects and music and like the f- music editing yeah like the, that's what they were um, so it's the creator, Maestro, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Oppenheimer, and the Zone of Interest. The the correct movie is nominated uh-huh. for this, and one hundred percent won't win. Hmm. You're saying that the Zone of Interest Zone of Interest is one is, of the most yeah. masterful uses of sound I've seen. Yeah. And Oppenheimer is going to win. Hundred percent. Because there's a big bomb. Also, but the also. Zone of Interest is in German and nobody saw it. That's correct. Yeah. It's cool it was nominated. Very cool. They, they at least recognized, hey, this is the best sound design in years. Yeah. You're not going to win, but yeah. we nominated you. Hey, at least you. you're being talked about. Yeah, at least you're being talked about. And I mean, we, we we could talk about that movie for a while, but I didn't realize until after I'd seen it that... It was in Germany. It was in Germany <laughs> and it was in 1944. What? Um... No, it, that the entire movie was shot all at once. Everything in the house oh. was shot at the same time. Okay. All, there were the the actors and actresses literally did not see a single crew person. Huh. All of the cameras were hidden. Oh. And interesting. every single actor was doing all of the scene at the same time. Huh. So really everything that was happening on the top floor while everything on the middle floor was happening and everything outside of the house was happening all at the same time. Wow. It was like a play. And that's how it was filmed. That's really cool. Yeah. I saw an interview with him and he was going I wish through... Jonathan Glazer made more than one movie every decade. Yeah. But, but the, the ones he makes the are... The ones he makes are good. Very cool. I don't think I've seen the one before Sexy Under the Beast. Skin. No. Really? I think he did Sexy Beast, didn't he? Oh, huh, maybe he did. Maybe I'm an asshole. Maybe you're an asshole. You know what, Scott? Everybody's got an asshole. Nobody wants to admit it. <laughs> Jonathan Glazer. What Sexy are... Beast, Birth, Under the Skin, Zone of Interest. So he, he... he directed but didn't write 
Sexy Beast, and then he re- directed and wrote the other ones. I haven't seen Birth either. I also haven't seen Birth. Nicole it- Kidman, Lauren Bacall, Lauren Bacall, huh. Danny Houston, Peter Stormare, Ted Levine, Anne Heche. Yeah, so how do he bang out Sexy Beast? The film beast follows and... Anna, who becomes convinced that her dead husband, Sean, is reincarnated as a 10-year-old boy. Well, that could lead to some interesting situations. Yeah, I should watch Birth. <laughs> how do he bang out Sexy Beast and Birth so quick? And then he has to do fucking uh, well, decades-long he did gaps. Of, he did uh, music videos? Yeah, he did. well, he did some music videos. Actually, only a couple. Not a lot. And some commercials. He, he has zero credits between 2009 and 2013, and everything even everything after um, 2004 he, is music excuse videos. Excuse me. <laughs> he did a commercial for Cadbury's Flake. He did a commercial <laughs> for Sony 3D. Pardon me. He did a commercial for a Volkswagen Polo, <laughs> and then he did an Audi commercial in 2013, and an Apple Inc. commercial in 2019. I, He's been a busy boy. I take back my previous statement. But anyways. Um, yeah, it, I, I did not realize any of that stuff until after. No, that's really cool. Yeah. That like he, and I guess, I don't know why, I guess he wanted them to feel more like it was, in, yeah. it was in the times time timeframe mm-hmm. and yeah, uh, uh, super cool. Huh? But yeah, you're right. Like that, the sound was one of the things that really stood out. And I think it's the, I mean, the whole story is just like the mundane day to day life of this, like of the common out of us e- <laughs> yeah evil human being and his family but like the things where they're like they're working in the garden and it's just just like this family like day like this what you do during the day is yeah the mom wife and kids are out like pulling weeds and cleaning the garden and you just hear gunfire from on the just, other side yeah, of the just wall quiet or like she's in bed sleeping asleep yeah. and you just hear like babies crying in the distance yeah. right or there's like uh there was one of like people screaming and gunfires while yep. they just zoom zoomed in on like the the flowers in the flower bed yeah and that's like yeah that that is just like it's so hauntingly like evil yeah and like yeah so uh, someone said like there's there's a different world war ii movie happening in the background of yeah. this movie you've th- that you'll never see yeah and like I, I spielberg came out and said that it's the best holocaust movie since schindler's list like he's like everything about this movie that's a weird thing to say by the guy who directed yeah, schindler's you know. list. uh but also like uh, you couldn't just say it's a great holocaust movie no. gotta hype yourself up scott if you're not proud, if you can't be proud of your own work, then don't make your own work. You know what? That's very true. Uh, also, is that the last good movie you made? Also, Oppenheimer. It deserves it. it that doesn't. Well, um, it's winning. I don't know. You weren't you weren't a BFG fan? <laughs> <laughs> there there is no director <laughs> who there's no famous director who has more movies where I go, oh yeah, he directed that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it BFG, is BFG really Ready Player yep. One. Yep. What are you doing, Spielberg? He's bored. <laughs> He's just bored. I guess the options are that or dedicate the rest of your life to Avatar. <laughs> yeah, that's a real that's a real lifestyle choice. Yeah. Just continue to make some of the worst movies that nobody asked for. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, Op- Oppenheimer wins. Most thing Oppenheimer zone, zone of Interest should win. Yeah. Uh, best production design is Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. Uh, like we said, I think it's again a two horse race. You, you think it's between two, and since you gave the other one to Barbie, you're giving this one to Poor Things. Yeah, I think and I'm also giving it to Poor Things. If I so. and if I if if they told me you can only give one to Poor Things, it would be production production over yeah. costume. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yep, absolutely. Like every and like every set piece is different. Yeah, and it's like a weird mixture of like Wes Anderson and Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, that's not a bad comparison. Yeah, you've yeah. got like these very aesthetically pleasing things. Yeah, but, still but they're kind of very warped and fantastical and yeah. weird, which is just like it's such a cool mixture. But yeah, yeah I, it definitely should win. Yeah, uh, and I think it probably will. Uh, here's the one. Who, who did you say for costume? You said I also, also said four things. things. Yeah, I mean because I, of my argument that I think they'll look at Barbie as yeah. you're not designing costumes; you're just making adult-sized toy costumes. I would like if you were right. I would also like to be right. Uh, here's the one I care the least about: uh, best original song, uh, "The Fire Inside" by from Flaming Hot. Music and lyric by Diane Warren. She has. 
They don't been talking about on this podcast way too much. 142 Oscar nominations. And how many wins? Like three? We saw three, A few. two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, like, I think she gets, she's been nominated every year since 1948. Yeah. I'm just Ken from Barbie music and lyrics by Mark Ronson and Andrew Wyatt. Oh, the other guy from Uptown Funk. Yep. <laughs> uh, I never went away from American symphony. What the hell was that one? Biographical documentary film written, shot and edited by Matthew Heineman. It explores the year of the life of John Baptiste or Baptiste. Oh, Okay. Uh, and his music career and his wife struggle with leukemia. Music and lyrics by John Baptiste and Don Dan Wilson. Uh, Wait, so he made a movie about himself? Yep. It's fucking gay. I agree. Wazahaze, a song for my people from Killers of the Flower Moon. Music and lyrics by Scott George. Hmm, Scott George doesn't sound very native. Oh, guys, George is a native. George is name. actually an extremely yeah, native true. last name. Uh, what was I made for by from Barbie? Music and lyrics by Billy Eilish and Phineas O'Connell. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what's winning because they only give it to whoever the biggest Most famous? star that did a song is, and that would be Billy Eilish. Eilish, baby. Uh, best original score, American fiction, Indiana Jones and the Tile of Destiny. But it's only because it's John Williams. I was going to say, they're like, let's just nominate John yeah. Williams for everything until he dies. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, which I didn't realize was Robbie Robertson. Uh, Oppenheimer, which was Ludwig Gorenson. That skinny kid from New York I wrestled? No, that's Robbie Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> and Poor Things, uh, Jer Jerskin Fendrix. I like a Jerskin. Well, that's a weird fucking name. So here's... It's not even his real name. It's his performer name. He's not a real Jerskin? No, his real name is just as dumb. His real name is Jerkskin. J Jocelyn, but spelled J-O-S-C-E-L-I-N. It's a dude. J-O-S-C? J-O-S-C. I don't like it. E-L-I-N. Dent Pooley. I don't like... <sighs> I don't like any of that, nope. but I am writing Jerkskin down. <laughs> well, I, I jerk my skin quite often. Yeah. Sometimes I jerk so hard it rips the skin. <laughs> um, here's the thing. I don't care about any of these. Um, I'm going to say poor things because that's what I want to win. But I think they'll give it to Killers of the Flower Moon probably. Here's the deal. Uh, Adam would tell you that the best score of the year is nominated here. I would tell you that the second... Yeah, Jones? Absolutely. John Williams, baby. You can't touch him. Uh, I would John Williams just doing the music from the other four movies. It's just the Indiana Jones music. If you <laughs> if you saw the first one, you know yeah, the music. Yeah, like, listen, if, if we're nominating Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah. then it wins. <laughs> sure. Um, I would argue that the second uh, best score of the... Um, of the year is nominated here. And I will Ooh. say the most creative score of the year. Okay. Um, there is definitely a movie from this year that I watched that had an amazing score that didn't get nominated. I I have one too, but I don't think it's the same movie because I don't think you've seen Shut it. Up. Okay, Shut let, up, pig. Let, let's have quiet time while you're sleeping. It, pig. <laughs> no, you can talk. I'll look up on Letterbox. See what I. Okay. Um. So yeah, of the nominees, Poor Things is the best. It's by far the most interesting and creative, as it is in many categories: production design, costume design, etc. Um. Yeah, so uh, of the nominees, if I wanted one to win, it would be Poor Things. Of the nominees, what is going to win? Oppenheimer. Of beyond nominees, what should win? The Boy and the Heron. Oh. Joe Hisaishi's score, as it is for most Miyazaki Ghibli movies, is fucking beautiful. Like, the whole time Kelly and I were watching Boy and the Heron, we were like, every song is so good. And only you cried, not Kelly, because he's an emotional monster. It, no, it wasn't really a cry -y movie. Oh. But I, you know what? I would even be more prone to crying just listening to the soundtrack than watching the movie. Because mm. like, the soundtrack does have songs you could cry to. Did you find your movie? I did. What is it? Uh, Past Lives. Oh, yeah. Past Lives had a very, very beautiful score. Yeah, it did. And I remember what when I was watching it, I was like, everything that's playing right now is some of, like is so beautiful yeah. and it fits perfectly with the whole movie. And yeah. So I, it's too I, bad it's not going to win shit. But um, I, I guess it's nice to get some nominees. It's yeah. First time director. Well, also. You could do worse. It It's sort of the like the ethnic vote. They're like, we got to get one real ethnic movie in there. That's this one. 
We got a bunch of. I China. mean, there's a bunch of. We got a bunch of Chinese last time. We got to do it again. Yeah, we do. At least, not, at least a Chinese lady's not winning Best Director. Uh, you're saying Oppenheimer? Boppenheimer. I'm going to say Killers of the Flower Moon. I feel like sure. because of the whole... <laughs> that they're going to be like... Hey, how are you? Hey, hey, how are you? Native American comedy. <laughs> <laughs> a pony goes up to Eagle and says, Will you yell at Dog for me? I'm very mad at him. <laughs> Why can't you yell at him? Because I am a little horse. <laughs> <laughs> Are we fucking on to the cool awards uh, yet? Yeah, no. I want to do live action short. Uh, best animated short film. Letter to a pig. Mm. Is it a thick, thick hog? Yeah. Hey, oh, it's Israeli. I'm out. Uh, 95 senses. Our uniform, which doesn't even have a Wikipedia page, so you can't tell me that's going to <laughs> win. Uh, Pachyderm? I guess Pachyderm. But Pachyderm? It- I mean, it's the word pachyderm, but with an extra E at the end, so it's like French pachyderm. I don't know. And War is Over, inspired by the music of John and Yoku, Dave Mullins. Oh, by Dave Mullins and Brad Walker. Well, uh, gay. Yeah. I is had that a- winning because it's John Lennon and Yoko Ono, and then Yoko Ono can go up on stage and win an Oscar and scream sing. Ooh, and then... Uh, and, and make then Chuck Berry be really mad. Demand uh, a... Plum floating in perfume served in a man's hat. Uh, I had a quick look because I haven't seen uh, any of these or any of the live action shorts or documentary shorts uh, and not that many of the documentaries. Um, but uh, this one appears to be between uh, John and Yoko and Letter to a Pig. Okay. Uh, Are you going with Letter to a Pig because it's got a pig in it? Going the other way. Go oh. John and Yoko. I don't give a shit. So yeah, that I guess. <laughs> cool. Uh, live action short, The After, the only one I've seen, uh, Invincible, Night of Fortune, Red, White, and Blue, and The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar, which is Wes Anderson, and I should have watched, but also don't so I assume that. Uh, yeah, it's probably that, based, it, it, I guess it's entirely dependent how much name recognition Wes Anderson has. If he has enough, then it wins. If he doesn't, then maybe it's also something... It's a roll doll, though, and I think a lot of people yeah. might want to... Yeah. Um, you watched The After? Yep. And... It is the most baitiest <laughs> Oscar bait that's ever baited ever. It's David like they, o- o- Yeah, they tried so fucking hard to get... Please give us an Oscar! Can yeah. you not see how hard we've been trying in this 18-minute short? <laughs> And then the only other one I really know about is Red, White, and Blue, which I think is a, like, uh, having to go to another state to get an abortion Ah. deal. Um, So it could be that one, it could be the after, or it could be the one by the most famous director of the bunch, and I'll say that one. Even though it's longer than the rest, and (gasps) and people hate watching long shorts. It's like 40 (laughs) minutes, and everything else is like 15. Uh, Yeah, that's true. So who's to say? But Um, I'll say Henry Sugar. I also agree. Uh, best documentary short film, The ABCs of Book Banning, The Barber of Little Rock, Island in Between, The Last Repair Shop, and Nai Nai and Waipo. Why do I? Why does the Last Repair Shop sound familiar? It's. It looked like one of the ones that had. It looked like it was maybe between that and the ABCs of Book Banning. Uh. Is is the last repair shop racial or something else? Or like about class? It's about a Los Angeles downtown warehouse where a handful of devoted craftspeople keep over eight eighty thousand student instruments in good repair. But what color are the craftspeople? Uh they appear to be a mixture of white, white, white. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna say white old men. White old men. Then I'm going as much now, I know you think maybe the white old men will vote for white old men, yeah. but lately they're not as much. Because uh, they're not allowed to. Yeah, so they're going to vote on issues, and I think ABCs of book yeah, banning probably. is the issue. Probably. Nobody wants Chinese grandmas. Nope. So Nine Nine Waipo is out. And the other two I don't really the, know. The Although Barbara, Barbara of Little Rock, I'm assuming, is racial. Probably. But Unless he's just a really cool guy who... Could just be a cool guy. Uh, best documentary feature film, Bobby Wine, the People's President, The Eternal Memory, Four Daughters, 
The one with the worst title, and don't we're not it. even going to say it. Don't think it, don't say it. Uh, 20 Days in Maripol, and then the fifth one that will not be mentioned, uh, although it is direct, done by David Oppenheim, who I think is a somebody. David Oppenheimer? Well, it's, it's, he's almost Oppenheimer, oh. so, so maybe um, that one wins. The only one that I'd heard of is Four Daughters. Yes. Um, but I think based on what 20 Days in Maripol is... Russia bad. Russia bad. Uh, I now, think they did Russia bad last the, year. I don't, I don't but think that matters. That said, I uh, think yeah. they will also do Russia bad this I year. I don't think that matters. So they, mm. that's definitely the one. And the one with the bad title doesn't even have anything to do with the world. Well, that, thank God. Yeah. Uh, so we're both saying bad Russia? We're both saying 20 days in Mariupol. <sighs> can we, okay, we can finally get to the real things. <laughs> Best animated feature. The Boy in the Heron. Yep. The, the Boy in the Harem. Uh, element, Lucky boy. Elemental. Boo. Uh, I believe Adam gave it a 1 out of 10. Nimona. Very good. Highly recommend. Not Pixar, so you can watch it. TF? But There's some TF. Good. Fun TF. Oh, okay. There's fun TF. Uh, Robot Dreams, which I... I think Adam gave an 8. Minimum 7, maybe 8. Who is it even... Is it foreign? Maybe. It is, in fact, foreign. Yeah. Uh, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which I liked, but I don't think wins. Adam gave it a seven. Uh, the, the Robot Dreams. Uh, I know what's probably winning. Yeah, me too. Are they giving it the boy in the heron? <sighs> Are they giving Miyazaki a Oscar on his final movie ever? Last one, I promise. Um, or do you just think that it's fucking elemental because it's always fucking Pixar? I think it might be fucking Spider-Man. I guess they did win. I think the, the other first one, one won. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, although this one is like much as Dune Part One was a very, very Part One. I haven't even I haven't seen this one. Apparently, this one is very much a Part yep. Two of Three. When when the end of this movie happened, it's like literally stay on, on a cliffhanger. Yeah, people in the theater I was in booed. <laughs> Damn. Even though you kind of knew it was a one of two. Uh-huh. But, uh... Or it's sort of... It, is it... I two, mean, it's... Two it, of three or more two, one of two? It's two of four, kind of. Oh, okay. But, like, um, it's good. And, like, the fact that it took them, you know, because there's so many different variants of Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse... Not for they, me. ...that all had to be animated... Me? In a, one white Spider-Man. One Spider -Man. white Spider-Man. <laughs> the uh, end. They all had to be animated in a different style and yeah. a different like like i think everything that went into it was pretty unique yeah like i i liked the first one i think that there's an, actually the first one is probably one of the best technically marvel movies that exists yep, absolutely low bar but very low bar <laughs> um i think that there's enough nerds that are now in the academy to go miyazaki that'll go miyazaki i would love for them to even like Boy in the Heron is good. Yep. It's not fantastic. But it's, it's also a, well, we should have given you more in the past. Yeah. He Although did Spirited get, Away. He did get Spirited Away. But I mean, like, and that's when he deserved it for it. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think there's other movies that probably could have or should have I mean, Mononoke. Uh, Totoro. Yeah. Like, yeah, like a lot of 80s, 90s yeah, stuff. Yeah. But like, I think it's another one of like, well, it's his last, it's his last movie. He's like 99 years old. <laughs> Maybe we should just give it to him. Yeah. You know? I would love if they did. It's it's between that and Spider Man for me. I uh, I don't know. I will say I have. I'm picturing them reading the envelope on stage, and I see a white bitch <laughs> saying Spider Man. Okay. So that's what it is. Yes, mark it down. If that happens. Also, if King Charles dies on July 21st, <laughs> uh, y'all owe me. Mark it down. You just got a million dollars. White bitch saying Spider-Man. Okay. Uh, best international feature film. Uh, Yo Capitano. Perfect Days. Yep. Society of the Snow. What the What's fuck that, is that about? <laughs> the Teacher's Lounge and the winner and the rightful winner, The Zone of Interest. Yeah, guys, Again, if we've, you... we've said this, I think every time we've done it, we've said this. If you're nominated for Best International Film, yeah. but you're also nominated for Best Picture, if Best Director... If you're the 
only yeah, international sorry, film. You're the only, but also yeah. nominated for best picture. Um, if you've got a few spare bucks, maybe bet on that because it's literally a guarantee. Yeah. But what's funny is this: it didn't have to be this way. Nope. France didn't submit Anatomy of a Fall for this award because they're mad at the director or something and they submitted some other bullshit because she's a woman maybe <laughs> they're right to be mad about that <laughs> they're, they're right to be mad they're right to so be we mad actually for the first time maybe ever would have had two two best foreign nominees yep. for best picture yep. but because france are catty bitches I, uh it's, i like it it is our our lock of the week, our shoe in yeah, of the week. Shoe We're holding a big week. shoe right now. Big shoe, really big shoe, really big shoe. Even though it says best international feature film, and it, when you go like country, Italy, Japan, Spain, Germany, United Kingdom, yeah, technically it's a different country, <laughs> but it's filmed in in a different language. Yeah. Uh, okay, best adapted screened screened play. Barbie adapted from the doll. Uh, American fiction based on the novel Eraser by Percival Everett. Um, Barbie uh, based on the characters created by Ruth Handler. <laughs> yep. Oppenheimer uh, based on the biography American Prometheus: The Triumph and Tragedy of J. Robert Oppenheimer. Poor Things, based on the novel by uh, Alice Alice Dare Gray. What I wonder a, what the novel's like. What a dumb name. <laughs> and Zone of Interest, based on the novel by Martin Amos. Amos? Amos. Hmm. Here's the deal. And this is something I alluded to earlier. The Academy <laughs> are simple people. They are. And they're going to vote for the Screenplay Award, which is about writing to the movie about books <laughs> american fiction okay interesting mark my words mark it down in the calendar put it in your calendar march 10th scott was right <laughs> i'm not i'm not i'm not a hundred percent sure about any of them no but i kind of just feel oppenheimer I mean, it could be it could be a straight up Oppenheimer like sweep. Yeah, I feel like it might just be Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer might win twelve Oscars. Yeah, and there you go. Chris Nolan gets his one and his only Oscar tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah. I kind of feel like they're just gonna be basic bitches and go with Oppenheimer. That's entirely possible. Yeah. Uh, Which would be true if Oppenheimer was about books. books. <laughs> Uh, although if Barbie wins, then Noah Baumbach gets one, but also Greta gets one. So I, I like Greta though. I I genuinely do like Greta. I, I also like Greta, but I will I will sacrifice Noah not getting one. So that Greta doesn't for get her one. to also not get one. Just that the, just against, so that the feminists can be nothing mad. against Greta, yeah. just against girls. I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's that's worth it. Uh, best original screenplay: uh, Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Maestro. May December and past lives. Your thoughts. I know. I know. I don't think I, it's a lock for. I know what I very badly want to win. I know. I, I can tell you in which order I like these movies in. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, me too. I. But I'm not sure if my bias is going to lean towards. In descending order, would your ranking be. Anatomy, Past Lives, Holdovers, May, December, Maestro? Yes. Yes. It's cor correct answer. I want and think and pray and hope <laughs> we that the Academy will and hope and look at Anatomy of a Fall mm -hmm. and think that it is such a cleverly written and put together piece of film. Yeah. Yeah but I think it's going to the holdovers. I think it could definitely go to the holdovers. I'm actually going to say it goes to anatomy of a fall. Okay. You think they like foreign people enough that they'll be like, you get this movie. I don't know, no. but we'll find out. Is it written by the director that nobody likes? Justine Trier. It is. Do you think she'll be there? I guess no. she has to be. Like, well, she doesn't have, she can do whatever she wants. Okay, that's true. It's pre country. Uh, I, this isn't Islam. <laughs> true. No, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I don't know. I just feel like the holdovers kind of fits a lot of the 
category yep. checklist check mark things that they look for in a script yeah and it's like it, it's a mostly talking movie yeah yeah so i, I kind of feel like the holdovers might be the one that does it it's uh, i also i guess i wouldn't be surprised if fucking maestro ends up but uh, I really want Anatomy of Fall. I'd be pretty mad if Maestro won Best Screenplay. I think I'd be pretty mad if Maestro wins anything. Yeah, it's a like, bad movie. It, it's like it's not really a good screenplay. It's fucking terrible. I think we could have found a better nominee. Am I forgetting anybody? Oh, just the man behind the piano. <laughs> oh, kill yourself, Brad. Did you, uh, Brad, would you rather have an Oscar or the Eagles win another Super Bowl? I mean, I'd rather the Eagles win another Super Bowl. Me win an, win an Oscar? No, I clearly am not trying my hardest to get that. It, it makes me sad when someone I find so handsome yep. is such a little bitch. And the thing is, he is kind of charming. I know. Like, he is kind No, he, I... He comes across in normal I, I as a and, nice guy. I and my mother would both love to fuck Brad Cooper. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but sometimes he makes it hard. He really does. I don't know why he has to he be really like that. He really does. The um, two, uh, two fun maestro facts from uh, executive producer Tommy. <laughs> um, did you read the thing about how it took him six years to learn the conducting for the six minute piece he did in the movie. Now you're assuming that I didn't fast forward through the six minute performance <laughs> I, and also every other singing or performance I, thing in the movie. I gave it about 30 seconds and started fast forward and oh. couldn't believe how long I had to fast forward Damn. just him conducting. That movie was about an hour for me <laughs> and it was still nice. horrible. That's nice. Um, here, here is uh, one of Scott's uh, occupational hot takes <laughs> in the vein of photography, DJing, and a third thing that I've also said it about that I can't remember. Conducting. Being a woman. Being a woman. Yeah. That was it. Conducting is not that hard. Mr. Bean can do it. Uh, Mr. Bean can do he it. it. He's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's an alien, not retarded, Scott. <laughs> Sorry. Is that canonical? The beginning of the show, he falls from space. <laughs> In the opening credits, he falls from space into a light. It's been a while. Um, <laughs> the whole orchestra yeah. are high-level musicians. They, Some would argue the highest level musician. They barely need you. Yeah. If you know how to keep time, you can conduct. If you have basic rhythm. Yeah. You're good. Any black guy could conduct. Any black guy could conduct <laughs> or play bass. They all got perfect <laughs> rhythm. <laughs> yeah. It's, I do not I understand why yeah. the conductor gets so much praise. If he wrote the symphony, great. Yeah. Yep. Praise him for that. Yep. That's hard. That's legit hard. Yep. Conducting, not Nothing. hard. It's not hard. No. Fuck you, Brad. I don't get you, it. You could have picked that shit up in a week. But he's a perfectionist, Scott. He but had to get it down to every gay wrist movement that <laughs> Leonard Bernstein did. <laughs> and also, do you know the financials of Maestro? I do not, but I assume it's bad. What do you think the budget was? <sighs> a realistic budget? Realistic. What, like... Just like, hey, if you, just passing... Lunch, lunch, pale Joe on the street. Hey, what, what do you think Maestro costs? You saw Maestro, right? Who, gonna, everyone did. It's the best. I'm gonna take the. Th I'm gonna take into account the fact that I bet you Bradley Cooper. Like, Are you gonna plead the fifth? No. <laughs> I'm gonna take it into account because you do have I, the right to non-self incrimination. <laughs> oh, I incriminate myself constantly. Okay. Uh, I bet you. I bet you Brad Cooper took like no money for it because it's like his passion project. Uh huh. So I would assume that all of his like fees are out the are, window are deferred 80 million exactly 80 million andrew okay that seems high but it i would does I, seem high i would assume a lot of that cost is like the rights to things i guess uh location filming because yeah. they did a lot of like a lot, yeah harmonics and f like all, all philharmonic places and yeah. shit and getting all of the performers and stuff but yeah, that movie is not an eighty million dollar movie. Like, it doesn't look like that's it. like a nine that like Mr. Holland's Opus was probably like fifteen million dollars yeah. and was the same. Eighty but million better. Eighty million is half a water world. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it was and nobody had gills in like, this movie. Um, <laughs> no one drank their own piss <laughs> that we saw. That we saw. Yeah. Uh, that we saw. I'm sure. I'm sure Leonard and some of his boy toys were doing. 
Probably. Some business backstage. Probably. How much do you think it made? Did it have a theatrical release? It had a four-week theatrical release in order to be eligible for the Oscars. Now, $80 million was production budget or including marketing? I don't think the numbers we look See? up ever really include yeah. marketing. So, you're so normally like, you go one and a half. Yeah, sometimes. For, for there, a big there, That wasn't marketed as hard, I don't Call feel Call it 100? Like. Yeah, I'll say 100, maybe 110. Yeah. So, oh man. 30? 890,000. Nice. Didn't make back one of the 100 nice. million. I like it. Yeah. I And it's an Oscar movie. And it's an Oscar movie. Well, some people will tell you. I would tell you it's not. I mean, it's, it's not. Because it's bad. It's and not. I didn't like it. It's a real uh, promising young woman. Man, that good, wasn't an good, Oscar good, movie. Good either. movie, but not an Oscar movie. Not an Oscar movie. Promising Young Woman is better than Maestro, and I don't yep. really like Promising Young Woman. <laughs> nope. Although I believe when we rebooked, you gave somebody an Oscar nomination, or maybe Bo Burnham. Maybe gave him the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. I maybe gave Bo Burnham Best Supporting Actor. I don't know. I might have been feeling frisky. Um. All right. Now we get to the actual like ones. God, that most, take forever. That most people care about. Uh, now we hit two hours. Got a okay. Bye. Turn it off. Bye, everybody. Although uh, we we should try to go exactly the same as last year. So can you vamp another hour thirty six? Done. Perfect. Uh, best Supporting Actress mm -hmm. Emily Blunt Oppenheimer I don't think As she did a lot Kitty Oppenheimer Did you think she did don't a lot? Cut me off I'm did trying you? to stretch this out for an hour <laughs> Did you No oh, she was not hold on. Now, now I'm just trying to And I've gotten lost in my own grammar oh. Did you think she did a lot? No Do you think she did a lot? But I, but I was trying to ask it in the past tense Right I don't think she no, she was there. She was there. Is it just because of the, the completely uh, a atonal, out of place sex scene? But that wasn't even her, was it? That was Florence Pooh, hmm. who's by the way, her tits should be nominated for this because <laughs> I'd vote for them. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess it was Florence. Yeah. Yeah, Emily didn't do anything. She was present. Uh, Danielle Brooks for the color purple as Sophia, which which we both saw well, opening night. Saw opening night because I love uh, musicals and black people. <laughs> uh, America Ferrara for Barbie as Gloria is the most insane nomination. I don't love it because nothing. She's not even remotely the best supporting actress in the movie. No, it was the. Um... It was the Ken cast as a Barbie. <laughs> he was brave. The daughter was better. The Her daughter, daughter was more was important as a supporting character. It's for America's monologue. The women have it hard monologue. Yeah. That's what it's for. Cool. Uh, Jodie Foster, Nyad as I Bonnie Stoll. Uh, she wouldn't fuck you. You're the, you've got a penis. We'll see about that. Uh, and Divine Joy Randolph for the holdovers as Mary Lamb. I didn't know... Um, that, no, that, that wasn't Monique. I, I, I well, you, you you stepped on my joke. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know Monique's real name was Divine Joy Randolph. <laughs> if you think, uh, I, here here is, is your a real lock. Here Monique? is a prediction you can fucking set your watch to. <laughs> At the Oscars stream, <laughs> Scott makes so many Monique jokes. Adam gets mad. I, I in fucking. I'd put money on that for put, sure. Bet the farm. I'll bet the farm on that. Yeah, yeah. Especially when she wins, because she is. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Does she deserve I, to? I don't know. But like, she, this is a weak crop. Here's the thing. I thought she was good. She was good. I didn't think she was in it enough. No. Like, and I wish that they had caught kind of like done more with her story yeah because you get pieces of like her mm. son and blah, 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 the family when she goes to visit her family that yep. she wasn't going to blah. but like i don't feel like they really like did enough with it no it I was agree. just sort of like a minor thing that got brought up every 30 minutes yeah right and like her, her relationship yeah, she just like peeked in every now yeah and like then. her relationship with paul giamatti like wasn't really like yeah. enough yeah but she is still the best person nominated of, of the group. Yeah. But like, I'd have to go look at other stuff. There have to be better options, right? Or do just, although we've done a lot of Oscars 
yeah. uh, podcast, and uh, we do often find ourselves in the woman st- category stumped yeah. for best supporting actresses. So maybe. I mean, I don't, what's the solution? Don't let women act and eliminate the award. I mean, Sandra Huller for Zone of Interest. She'd probably be lead. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's true. She's in most of the movie. The aforementioned Issa Rae for Barbie. Issa Rae for Barbie. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone know. must have done something somewhere, right? What's a good? I mean, movie? you could have done. Is there? A, I guess May May December. They're both kind of leads, right? Yeah, but normally you can get away with doing one for lead and supporting in that category. Cause same as Nyad, because I feel oh, like... Oh, yeah, that's true. They're both kind of They're both very, that, yeah. very much leads, and they split it. Um, yeah, I feel like there's better options. Uh, I just can't think of any, so maybe there aren't any better options. But uh, Monique wins. Bet the farm. Yeah, I agree. Bet the farm on Monique <laughs> and Adam getting mad about Scott saying Monique. <laughs> uh, best supporting actor, uh, Sterling K. Brown, American Fiction as Clifford Cliff Ellison. Uh, it's I feel a little bad for Sterling K. Brown that he can only play total assholes. (laughs) He's good at it. Even when he's kind of not. I don't know if he's supposed to be an asshole on This Is Us, but he definitely comes comes off as an asshole. (laughs) Well, I can only picture him as the dad in waves in in everything. Yeah. Dad in waves is what he should be on this is us he's because yeah. he's he's a very similar character mm. but you're supposed to like him on this is us right. but you know he's an asshole in waves yes yeah he's a monster in waves. absolute monster yeah. yeah and he's not that different in this is us. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at least in this one he's a secret gay uh robert de niro killers the flower moon i thought As de niro King Hale. was really good yeah i thought the Niro was very in good. flower moon I think Bob's good in everything, though. Like, uh, unless like he's doing like those dumb comedies, Dirty of, Grandpa, Dirty Grandpa, <laughs> or uh, the, the War with Grandpa. But like, I forget. There's two separate this, Grandpa movies and, and, starring Bob De Niro. Yes, and it's, who is going to be a father this year? And it's <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> and that has come up on the pod probably four times. Yep. But they're spaced out enough that yep. I always forget. Always forget that De Niro is in two unrelated Grandpa yep. movies. But like. He genuinely is still a. Is he very... actually like having a child this year? Remember him and Pacino. Remember they both got their why they're like Pacino that... got his girlfriend pregnant. Yeah, and De Niro got his his wife pregnant or whoever she. Is. Yeah, hundred oh, percent. That's crazy. They're eighty. Uh, that, well, they're fucking eighty. They are fucking at eighty. <laughs> they might be fucking at ninety. Clint fucks at ninety. Clint's disgusting. <laughs> Clint, Clint, Clint's, Clint's disgusting. Clint reeks of bo. Um. But yeah, like, De Niro, like, uh, no, I don't want all of your appearances and things. Oh, he also did About My Father with Sebastian Manic Oh, yeah. So, and that's kind of being a grandpa. Yeah. Uh, and he's in Amsterdam. Look at that. Like, uh, shout, shout out to... Uh, when are we going to see back. Amsterdam? We can watch tonight if you want. Um, That's David O. Russell, right? Yes. That was the one that we didn't know was a thing yeah. until we and were at brunch. And then- like absolutely insane cast yes and um, nobody saw it i was gonna say i guess he is in a bunch of stuff but then he's also in like did you see the wizard of lies nope barry levinson it was his bernie madoff movie i know that barry has a cool son who's sure not does. a pedophile he, that made euphoria he sure does uh he was yeah like i don't know i feel like he's good in things he is in fact good in things it, like everything he's in when i see him i don't go hot oh bob <laughs> i go like okay i like bob hot podcast take robert de niro good at acting good at acting yep um, but I, I i thought he was very good in Cozy the flower moon me too me i too. would not be mad if he won but he's not going to uh ryan gosling for barbie as ken mark ruffalo for poor things as Duncan Wedderburn and the winner Robert Downey Jr. and Oppenheimer as Louis Strauss. <laughs> the the winner as I walked out of yeah. Oppenheimer opening day yeah. in July. Yeah. said Robert Downey yeah. Jr. is going to win Best Supporting 100%. Actor. I, yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah. and it's true. It's true. He, he's amazing in it. Yeah, he he um, does great, and it is so. It's it's not an Oscar Beatty performance. It's no. just like the thing that the Oscars like. Yep. I can't even articulate what that is, but just watching it, you're like, this is an Oscars Best Supporting Actor performance. Yeah, right. It's kind of an an actor playing out of type 
as a historical figure. Yeah. Is something that they really like. They do like that. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly feel like this is the first time in quite a few years that uh, I think all five are great performances. Um, I mean, maybe there are other people that in my head, I'd be like, ah, maybe I'd put so-and-so. Over. Sterling like, K would be the weakest. Sure. I'm, I'm very, very. I still thought he was really good, though. He was good. Uh, and the other four were excellent. Yeah, right? Like, I think this is the strongest This year is very ever. strong. Um, it's like a reverse supporting actress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, best actress. Ruffalo was great, by the way. Ruffalo was awesome. Yeah. Uh, also, I guess you can't just nominate everybody, but Willem Dafoe should have probably been in there, too. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. He was great, too. But uh, you can't just all nominate everybody from one movie. Um, also, a shout out to Benny Safdie, too. He was fucking great, too. Yep. <laughs> Um, best actress is Annette Benning for Nyad as Diane Nyad. Uh, Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon as Molly Burkhart. Sandra Hewler, Anatomy of a Fall as uh, Sandra Voiter. Uh, Carrie Mulligan as a beard in Maestro. <laughs> Felicia Monte- Montregrier. And Emma Stone in Poor Things as Bella Baxter. Uh, I think we both we both know who should win. We both know who and... should win, and we both know who will win, and they're not the same yeah. person. Because diversity. <laughs> yeah. It's I, so funny. I think she could still win. I think I I would be I mean, yeah, fucking Maybe thrilled. I am thinking with my who I want. No, I, to. no, it, it's not impossible. Like I think she's a very close number two. If it was gonna go to anyone else, it it would be Emma Stone. Yeah. Um, maybe if she was a slight tiny itty bitty bit ethnic she can play a half japanese though. she can absolutely play half japanese mm. and she once i heard <laughs> once she was so good she won best picture <laughs> <laughs> if i'm not mistaken <sighs> you dumb old <laughs> i mean no but you it was partly their fault you have and to have partly the, put in a bad situation you have to have the ability to look at it see emma stone's name and and, and maybe realize and be like um this doesn't make sense yeah not just um you read it la la land <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's fair uh, it could have been handled better so we're saying emma stone should win but it's gonna be lily gladstone we're saying Emma Stone should win hands fucking down. It was such a complicated performance, yep. and she did it so well. Yep. Uh, but uh, counterpoint, Lily Gladstone is, is Indian. <laughs> uh, I didn't even... Not only do I not think it was an Oscar-winning performance, I'm not sure it was that good. I didn't know that uh, dying in a bed for over an hour was enough to get you a nomination. Well, she, she had, but I guess that's what Leo did when he won for The Revenant. That is true. So was, he just got mauled by a bear yeah, just, and they were like, best actor. <laughs> <laughs> she had like, well, she had two. She had two parts. The second half, yes, was dying in a bed. And the first half was uh, when, like healthy Lily where... Um, I did not enjoy her performance. It was like this combination of acting. Like it was like this meta thing where she was like kind of winking to the camera and acting like she was too good for this and didn't want to be there. Hmm. That's a vibe I got. Maybe I'm just racist. I mean, you're definitely racist. Oh, okay, but I'm also racist, <laughs> and I felt. I sort. I, got, I felt somewhere. I I kind of felt that it was, the idea was that she was there was like a she was doing a stern native woman who had sort of been like forcefully brought into white seen culture it all and been through the but weird. it came across there as was cunty. a yeah there was a snark to it yeah that didn't really make sense for the character yeah it just felt like Lily being snarky yeah which is weird for uh largely first time first major movie actress in a martin scorsese movie you think you'd be a little more chill but nah. uh but apparently well, but what do i know it's gonna get her an oscar so fuck me Boo. uh she's gonna win and it's so funny how people in trying not to be racist are racist Correct. You and I are both racist. <laughs> well, yeah, this is the opposite of us. Because, yeah. like, they're like, 
oh, we should we're we'll be not racist and give it to the native. But it's like it's the racism of low expectations. One like that oh, a- th- anybody who, this yeah. is this is the this is the best one of them is ever going to do. Yeah. One of them may never do anything again. So we better give it yeah. to this one. It's all like that's making, fucking racist. It's all like they're making dances with wolves, too. <laughs> exactly. And they're like, we'll go to whoever the lead is in that. Yeah, we give it to West Studi Jr. Nay, hey, I 100 West Studi. But like, uh, I I hate the, the Pharaoh. I hate the racism of not trying not to be racist. Yeah, it's true. It's embarrassing, and it's and like it's not even to the point where it's about the actual best performances anymore. Nope. It is just about what's going to make everybody think we're super uh, righteous and yeah. you know forward thinking and move. Yeah, I I, I would say. She's she's number three at best. Let me see. I'd say Emma's better. I'd say Sandra's better. Yep. I didn't see Nyad. It was okay. I didn't hate it. Car- I mean, I like Carrie Mulligan better as an actress, but she was in Maestro, and Maestro was bad. Yep. So And she was a newsie who was she, unattractive. Yeah, she looked like a newsie. <laughs> uh, well, that sucks. I'm mad about this, but uh, what can I do? It's... But, you know, please... <laughs> Prove me wrong and De- give it to Dear, Dear Academy. Dear Academy. Feel free remember, to be the opposite of what we think you are. Yeah. At Academy, remember last year when uh, you made me so happy I almost cried by giving Brendan Fraser the Oscar over Austin fucking Butler? Uh, you could do that. Remember again. the remember a year before when you made us very happy by not giving dead Chadwick Boseman it and giving it to Anthony Hopkins, who wasn't, who wasn't even, even there. there. And then the broadcast and just goes off the air. Inexplicably doing that award last <laughs> for the first and only time in the history of your broadcast. That was because they were one so sure hundred percent so sure. certain that Chadwick Boseman was winning. And then they're like, oh, Anthony Hopkins, the guy who should the win guy who deserves won. it. And he's in bed in Wales. Good night, everybody. <laughs> he's been asleep for four hours. <laughs> he was asleep before the fucking broadcast and he had to, started. He had to record a video the next day. Yep. Oh, uh, gee, thank you for oh, letting me win. Thank you so much. I, I was I asleep. It, I thought it was going to be the dead black guy, so I didn't stay up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't Amazing. Think he, he never goes, right? I don't think so. I don't think he's ever been. Good for him. Did he? No, because he won for Silence, Silence of the, of the Lambs. Lambs. And he's, I think he, he, was, was, he was there. Yeah. But every other year he's been nominated, he chooses not to go because he's a quiet old man who likes to stay in Leave him alone. Yeah. He seems like a nice guy. He does seem like he's a nice like guy. a nice old gentleman. I have not heard bad things about Anthony Hopkins. I'd kiss him on the cheek. It's like kissing a prune. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, best actor, uh, Bradley Cooper for Maestro as Leonard Bernstein. Nope. Coleman Domingo for as Ru- for Rustin as Bayard Rustin, which we both obviously uh, saw. Pass. <laughs> Paul Giamatti, is that how you spell? <laughs> Paul Giamatti for the holdovers is Paul Hunnam. Hunnam. Yep. Uh, Cillian Murphy, uh, Oppenheimer. Cillian? Uh, Killian, whatever. <laughs> Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer, J.I. Robert Oppenheimer, and Jeffrey Wright. Not that Jeffrey Wright, the other Jeffrey Wright, because one of my friends is, kid, is named Jeffrey Wright. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so to be clear, the famous actor, the famous and, actor not and not your not friend. my friend. Okay. Uh, American fiction as... Th- Thelonious, Thelonious Monk, Monk Ellison. Ellison. Stupid. Uh, Paul Giamatti? I thought it was Paul Giamatti. <gasps> but I think the winds are shifting to Killian. Bradley Cooper. No. Oh. I you won't have it. I'm saying Killian. You can say Paul. I'm going to say be, Paul Giamatti. You can certainly can. I. Think, he was great. I think he's been underrated for too long. Yeah. And if I could go back in time, I would give it to him for sideways. But it's too late now. <laughs> Only twenty years. Yeah. Was was the was he not even nominated, or was he nominated and just didn't get it? I don't think he was nominated. Really? I don't remember. That's bonkers. Shut up, man. <laughs> Shut up, man. You're so angry. <laughs> uh, Academy Awards. Uh, be- it was nominated. He was not. Not nominated. It was Best Adapted Screenplay, which it won. Alexander yeah. Payne. It was nominated for Best Move, Best Picture. Yeah. Best Supporting Actor, Thomas, Thomas Hayden, Hayden Church. Church. Best Actress in a Supporting Role, Virginia Madsen. And Best Achievement in Directing, Alexander Payne. So, he, so he didn't everyone win. but Giamatti, who every- was the best thing oh, in the Sandra, movie. Oh, Sandra Oh, she didn't get nominated. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a travesty. He's been nominated for two. And I guess he hasn't won. He was nominated for Best Supporting Actor in Cinderella Man in 2005. Mm, okay. And then this. And that's it. Interesting. I'd, I'd love if he won. I don't think he is. Oh, Scott. What? He was nominated for a primetime Emmy Ooh. for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Comedy Series for playing Juror Number 10 on oh, 12 Angry Men Inside, inside Amy, Amy Schumer. Schumer. Oh, I'm so happy. That's awesome. That might be the best episode of television ever. It's up there. It's so good. And it, it's so good. And, and it's this, so this well is, written. Yeah. And this is coming from people who <laughs> don't. Who have met and hate who have, Amy Schumer. Yeah. And, and the hate has only grown in the 11 years interim between meeting her and now. Especially now with her super cool appeal. Like, and I, being very skinny. I bet, I bet she wouldn't even think Aaron Bushnell is cool. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Uh, yeah, I think Giovanni's been underrated for too long. And yeah, he's I think, awesome. And I think he's going to... I think he'll get it. I would I would be... Yeah, I, I, in terms of who I'd want to win, it probably is him. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, but I think Killian's going to edge him out. Mm, edge him? Yeah. Uh, all right, down to the last two. Best Director... Justine Triette for Anatomy of a Fall. Martin Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon. Chris Nolan for Oppenheimer, Yorgos Lanthos for Poor Things, and Jonathan Glazer for The Zone of Interest. And we both think it is Mr. Chris Nolan getting this award because th that's what they're going to do. Because it's it's his turn. Yeah. This year. I mean, he also like, I think we've said it. We said it before about James Cameron when we were doing like the rebookings and stuff. Yeah. And like Avatar and blah, blah, blah. It's like. He like developed new things and new technologies and he yeah. like that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. As much as you may think that like there are, there are other people that their movies were better or you enjoyed more or whatever. I mean, I think when you're creating something that's more than just a movie, mm -hmm. like it's like uh, it's like a piece of history yeah. or whatever, like that's kind of hard to overlook. Absolutely. And it's still it's still a good movie. It is a good movie, and he he he's a good director for yeah. the most part. I mean, he's it's just not his best movie. It's just not his best movie by far, actually. Yeah, but how many better movies does he have? Uh, three. M Memento better. Memento better. Prestige better. Prestige better. What comes between Memento and Prestige? Uh, Insomnia. Yeah, I'll, I like Insomnia. It's good. I'll I'll, I'll give Batman Begins. The Dark Knight. Yeah, where do I put the Batmans? Inception. Inception. Dark Knight Rises. Interstellar. Dunkirk. Tenet. I really like Dunkirk. I think Dunkirk is better than Oppenheimer. I I, I really just like the way that that yeah, movie flows. Yeah, as, as far and, as like s more straight ahead, not weird Nolan movies. Yeah. Yeah. It's maybe more successful than yeah. Oppenheimer. I don't, I don't want to out myself on this podcast as being straight, but... Uh, I don't really like Interstellar that much. And you can say it's because I'm dumb and don't understand it, but that's not even part of it. I just that, felt like that's, there what, was, that's what people say about Inception. I think there's just too much going on. Here's a bold statement. <clears throat> You've never seen Interstellar. I've never seen Interstellar. That's fine. Too long. I mean, it is too long. I don't got the damn time. It's just too complicated. Like, I don't... If I wanted to sit down and watch this, like very scientifically interconnected little pieces of information to like loop them together into a story. I'd read a fucking book. <laughs> yeah. The, I, I'm watching a movie to be entertained and there's too much in that movie. That's like hypothetical science and time travel and space and time. And like, I'm not in, that's not why I watch movies. I watch movies so that Keanu Reeves can throw knives at people and then get 100%. his leg broken, but still run on it for, for another hour and a half. The, the only reason I would watch it is to see if it holds up under scrutiny better than inception because mm. inception does not. There is stuff in Inception that straight up doesn't work by the own rules they set themselves. I've seen Inception the one time I saw it in theaters. Yeah. I've not seen it again 
because I'm afraid to watch it because ah. I think I might hate it. Yeah. Because like the you know the more you think about pieces and you see people talk like, like oh like these like relative timelines yeah. don't work no yeah and even just the concept of going into a dream into a dream that slows down time as you go out yeah uh, like even that doesn't really work yeah oh, and one of the most annoying things is the fact that it brought us the boop. I mean, sure. And then uh, every movie had that for like movie five for years. for a very long time yeah. had that. But uh, th- that movie made me think that Christopher Nolan has never had a dream. <laughs> because nobody has that lucid of dreams. That lucid and nothing's like weird and dreamy. Yeah. And none. It just felt the, like the, video game levels, yeah, not the, dreams. The, the dream doesn't go from start to finish. It's like here's the dream you started and out on shit wildly now changes. you're in something completely different now with you're no in, explanation now you're in sort of your the house you used to live in but yeah. not really it's also sort of your school yeah and, <laughs> but and then like and you have a tail and then like and, a kid who's you've never seen before in your life and yeah you've completely created in your head but is somehow your best friend that you've known for 30 years yeah and you have this whole plan and story yeah. and then next thing you know there's like demons trying to eat your dick <laughs> yeah <laughs> like like yeah. It's, it was so not dreamy. Yeah, it really wasn't. uh, It's, yeah, I, there's, I have a lot of problems with Inception. Yeah, that's why I haven't watched it again because I'm afraid that I'm going to watch it and go, oh, I hate this. Leave the memories alone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if like, if you kind of like it in your head, just leave it. Yeah. No good can come from a rewatch. Exactly. Um, Nolan wins. Uh, Yorgos absolutely should win. Uh, Sorry, Yorgos. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, honestly, Jonathan Glazer also deserves and to win. And Glazer from, did a fantastic Only job. from, lear- like, you know, I've, the movie's great, but learning the style of how he Very filmed cool. it, yeah. I was like, th- that's really unique. Yeah. Um, all right, and finally, best picture, uh, American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, and The Zone of Interest. Yep. Um, I guess we just both assume, is it, it's Oppenheimer? I think it's an Oppenheimer kind of year. Yeah, I, I, I could see there be an argument for Killers of the Fire Moon just because it's Marty and the subject matter and yeah, but yeah, I think Oppenheimer is probably going to win. Be, I would be fucking rad if poor things did. Where would I place it as far as movies like in the order of which I liked things? Third last? Oppenheimer? No, Killers of the Flower. Oh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Um one, two. Do I like that one more? Three, four, five, six. I think it might be seventh. Yeah. I think. Barbenheimer are my five six out of ten. I would say Maestro's ten. Yeah. American Fiction nine. I guess by default, yeah. Maybe Flower Moon eight. <sighs> yeah. Uh is holdover seven? Is anything Holdover's better than any of the others? No. Nope. No? Holdover 7. Yeah. Barbie Bar- 6. Barbie 6, Oppenheimer five. 5. Then kind of tricky. Past Lives 4. Past Lives 4. And then I think we would maybe not exactly have the same one. I think Poor Things is one for both of us, right? Okay. Poor so Things is one. Two and three and is a good I, I think I'd put Anatomy of a Fall 2 and Zone of Interest 3. Yeah. and I. But think, it would be very close. Yeah. And I think I'd switch them. Yeah. So, we, so we're so we one. So if this was, I don't know, some sort of kissing situation, uh, we, would about, we would be about to have eight kisses. Well, better stay tuned for Best of 2021 and one, see. One, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. But. Unfortunately, it's not 2021, which I guess it's people not. will find out about. And which will be once a, Scott's watched another like 35 movies in two weeks or four weeks or a different, or number, a different of number of weeks. <laughs> I still got a view to watch. Yep. Um, so that's that. Yeah, we're, I, seeing, we're both seeing Oppenheimer. I hope you marked these all down. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, Anti Fat Catboy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we'll see if I. I don't think I'm gonna start calling myself Fascist Catboy. <laughs> Fa Catboy. Fa Catboy. <laughs> yeah, I don't 
plan to change any come Oscar time, but we'll see. And I don't know if I did last year or if I had just forgotten what I said the first time. Because it was mostly like, you know, sound and documentary short that I changed. So, uh... I, yeah, I mean, don't, don't ask me to try to remember anything ever. (laughs) Um, the only, the only thing I will say now that we're done is I feel like I would have maybe liked to have seen Greta Lee be nominated for best actress. I thought she was good. She was really good. Yeah. And I thought, what the hell is the guy's name? I might need to scroll down and find the thing. Um, I'm I'm surprised no acting nominations from May December. Uh, I yeah. thought Natalie Portman when I saw the movie, it was before we seen Poor Things, and I said uh, give fucking Natalie Portman the Oscar now. Mm. But then doesn't even get nominated. Okay. Julianne Moore was pretty good. Um, but the one I was thinking of, who I don't even know his fucking name, uh, is Charles Melton, the Asian guy. He is. Uh, yeah, Charles Melton, who plays the boy that she has the affair with and then becomes her husband when they grow up and blah, blah, blah. Oh, in past lives? In, in, no, in, um, May, December. Oh, okay. Is, uh, oh, the boy. He, he, mm-hmm. he, he was also very good. Like, okay. I, I was very surprised that none of them got nominated for anything. Yeah, I should watch that because, uh. Well, Scott, you're going to like the story. I mean, I know the story. I like the story. I like it a lot. <laughs> Big fan of the story. And I think Adam really liked the movie... Two. Nine? Really? You both gave it nine. I mean, I gave it a nine, yeah. Holy shit. I guess I should watch this fucking movie. Well, I don't know. What am I doing? Uh, crap in your pants? <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the... Hmm. Guy who's directed has directed a lot of stuff that I either like or want to see. But also some, but he, man, he is fucking in love with Julianne Moore. <laughs> well, can't win them all. I mean, I like her too. She's pretty fucking great. Oh, she's great. But uh, did he do Wonderstruck with her? Because that movie sucks. Uh, I don't know. This guy, this is a handsome Asian boy. That is a handsome Asian boy. Uh, I don't. Oh! S- yeah, he did Wonderstruck with her, and uh, it is uh, that's a bad one. But they did other good ones. Far is, from heaven, it is that's very angry outside. By the way, don't look, don't look. I looked. It's bad. I'm never leaving here. Anyways, uh, I guess that's the Oscars, and it's over. That is the Oscars, and it's over. Uh, more than an hour shorter than last year. We're getting real tight with this. Well, we really milked it for that last bit. We really could have gone a lot faster in that last thirty minutes, but you wanted to get it to three hours, so <laughs> you know me. People demand it. They demand we go long. So I th- I think we're doing a season of anime next uh, next week. Hopefully. Um, and then we will figure out a whole bunch of other ones, some of which we planned on, some of which we forgot about uh, for the upcoming weeks. But the one thing we know is that Smarch Madness is happening. It's around the corner. Three weeks from today. Correct. Yes. Place your bets. That's we don't know much, but we know that it's the biggest episode of the year. So get your fares in order and listen to that episode. Basketball, give me, give me, give me the ball because I'm gonna dunk it. Yeah. Basketball, give me, give me, give me the ball because I'm gonna dunk it.